Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. This news story has just been turned into our studios this morning. A recent article in the Kentucky Post reported that a woman, one Ann Maynard, has sued St. Luke's Hospital, saying that after her husband had surgery there, he lost all interest in sex. A hospital spokesman replied, Mr. Maynard was admitted in ophthalmology. All we did was correct his eyesight. Here's Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Gina, get up off the floor. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. I'm Zeb Bell at Zeb at the Ranch on a Thursday. Brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, including, of course, Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland in Burley, and our friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today, 734-6969. Good morning, Gina. Good morning, Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> How are you? I love that story. <laughs> I know, it's <was> very cute. <laughs> All we did is correct his eyesight, lady. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Anyhow, what are you up to today? Um, you know, uh, chaos and mass mayhem, as, as per the norm here at Lee Family Broadcasting. Oh, really? Oh, sure the boss that. coming for a visit or something? No, I've got, uh, of course, you know, I adopted this little kitten, and we're trying to make it a cat kitty, and so he's uh, hanging out with me here in the K-Bar studio. And what's, so what's his name? We haven't named him yet. I'm calling him Mr. Mew. Mr. Mew. Mr. Mew. Hmm. Okay, well, far be it from me to correct what you want to call your kitty cat. Well, you know, he could be. I don't, we have not decided on an, uh, an official name. Aside from just kitty, it's Mr. Mule. Why don't you call him Transmitter? I could. Transmitter. I'm more like Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, there you go. I like Alfred. You know, Alfred Hitchcock was an amazing person. He was a lot different than the persona he portrayed standing in front of the camera. Yes, yes. Yeah. He, he was kind of a fun-loving guy. But you would never know. Were they very sick mind? <laughs> very sick mind. Sick and twisted individuals. I love that movie, The Birds. It scared yeah. me to death. You know, I can't watch that movie. Yeah, it's tough. It kind of freaks me out. Yeah. Anyway, do we have a pledger? Actually, uh, we do have Mr. Michael Rogers on for the pledge and for the weather. Oh, he showed up. Yes, he decided to call in. Oh, my goodness. We are so blessed. I Ladies know. and gentlemen, here's Michael Rogers with our pledge. Good morning, everybody. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, I want to tell you that the greatest weatherman in the world and a great friend of mine, Mr. Michael Rogers, weather.com is going to be brought to you by Rock Creek Growers on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly. they got a big sale going on over there. And you can check out all the patio pavers, the wall blocks, all the bushes, all the trees, everything, all the fall grasses, everything at sale prices. Check it out at Rock Creek Growers on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly, 423 And now, and by the way, too, before you get started, great job yesterday, Michael. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com. It's one of those days where you thought it was going to cool off and we were done with summer. Wrong. We're going to see hot temperatures, low 90s for today, a lot of sun, very little clouds. 
This is going to stay with us all the way through Sunday. So, have a nice day. Enjoy the weather. It is the only weather you've got. Hey, man, thank you very much. Michael Rogers, weather.com. Brought to you by Rock Tree Growers on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberley. Let's sell some cattle, shall we? All right. Get set of steer calves. They're here to get all our 31. One moment, I have 31. One moment, I have 32. Two, and I have three. One moment, I have one. That's Merv May, the world's best auctioneer, right there at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Sale time, 1030 to this morning, don't you miss it. For more information, you can call Merv Mayor Lance Udy right there at 678-9411. Here's just part of the run they're going to have today. They're going to be uh, having P-Bar S Dairy out at Malta, bringing in 107 Holstein steers, weighing 750 to 950. Kelly Searle, good morning. Kelly over at Burley, 40 head of Holstein steers, 8 to 900 pounds. Gary Jones up at Elmo, there's the cowboy up on the mountain, 40 head of 6 to 700 weight cattle. And Pike Gensmer, hello. Old Pike over at Rupert, 12 head of steers, 750 pounds, Holstein steers. That's going to be part of the run today at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Accidental Avenue. I said accidental, meant to say occidental. That was an accident. Burley, Idaho, 6789411. Merv, sell those steers. All right. Get set of steer calves. They're here to get all the 31. One minute, I have 31. One minute, I have 32. Two and a half. Three minute, I have 134. Four minute, I have 5 minute, I have 135. One minute, I have 135. One minute, I have 135. One minute, I have $7. 35. Does that mail get bottom again? Amen to that. Always do. Thank you, Merv. Appreciate it. Good guy right there, Merv May. Hey, don't forget Cow Pies and Coffee Cups, my blog. It has taken off and gone all over the country. We've got people receiving it in Florida, Tennessee, Texas, Wisconsin, all over the place. Well, we're going to be turning out Volume 100 in the next couple of weeks, and we're celebrating by giving away a prize to one of our lucky subscribers. Now, what I'd like you to do is tell your friends and family to visit my website, zebbell.com, zebbell.com, sign up for the Cow Pies and Coffee Cups newsletter so that you might be eligible to win. We're going to draw that name in the next couple of weeks, and uh, we're going to do it live on the air during my regular webcast, and don't miss it, okay? Sign up for Cow Pies and Coffee Cups right now. Uh, don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric. Talked to Keith yesterday, busy guy, busy guy, everybody's busy this time of the year. And I had a good visit with him, and we're getting ready for what we're going to do over there on uh, Salute to Farmers and also Patriots Day on 911. Don't miss it. We're going to be doing a remote broadcast over there. It is going to be so much ripping good fun. A lot of people, a lot of door prizes, etc. You can stop in anytime, all the time to Ramsey Heating and Electric for all your electrical needs. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Open 730 in the morning, Monday through Friday, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. All right, give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I have never heard of anything like this before. Honestly, I haven't. Um, our government, I want to say that again, but I, I still question the terminology, our government is telling Syria... What the targets are if we strike them, how long we will bomb them, and when. I, what kind of leadership is this? Now, Britain this morning has said, well, wait a minute, Obama, slow down. Slow down. You're moving too fast. You better make a checklist on what you're doing over here in the Middle East. And we're telling the bad guys... What we're going to do, this is, is, somebody I hope in the audience can tell me the sense and the sanity of telling the enemy what we're going to do. It's like getting into a prize fight, my dad used to be a boxer, and looking across to the next corner and saying, when the bell rings, I'm going to come out and throw a right hook followed by a left cross and then an uppercut. I mean, this is so doggone stupid. Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North is beside himself. I saw him yesterday, excuse me, on television. I saw him again early this morning. And he basically just came out and said that Obama is completely an amateur with complete stupidity on how he's running this. And all this, all this, now think about this, all of this happening with a possible strike against Syria just weeks, weeks, days, before 911. 
Our embassies, all of them, all over the world, are going to be at severe risk. There is going to be counterattacks. There is going to be uh, insurgents all over the globe that are going to come after the infidels America. And has Obama at all consulted with Israel? Have you read anything about his consultations or anything with Ben uh, Netanyahu, etc.? And by the way, here's another point that uh, Oliver North made this morning. Has Obama tried to find, through his administration, freedom fighters in Syria that are on our side, that are for the United States? That would be nice to help somebody and then find out they don't like us any more than the existing regime does. And does this man that's telling everybody what he's going to do in a very sloppy, very amateuristic, very poor world view as to how to do things, does this man understand the consequences that are going to happen when the first missile is released? Does he understand? Caller, I'm going to ask you to stay there and wait for me just a minute. Don't forget, uh, JB's today, we're going to be at Lunch Bunch. Oh my, yes, at 11.30, you be there. Lunch bunch at JB's, 136 East 5th North in Burley. Oh, my goodness, great breakfast buffets, lunch and specials, dinner. It's all there. And today, of course, we're going to have the big lunch bunch and the specials of Philly Hoagie with fries or tots, just six ninety five. And we've got some great door prizes from Smith's Food King and Walmart. Everybody be there at lunch bunch at 1130 today at JB's, 136 East 5th North. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Um he is an amateur and he doesn't know what he's doing or else he doesn't know what he's doing and he's on the side of the Muslims and he's trying to sink our country even quicker. But um, I heard one of the, I don't know if it was a congressman or senator on one of the other radio programs yesterday, and he basically said to do nothing would be just plain folly, uh, which is a ridiculous statement for them to make. And he said, um, and I'm not worried about Israel, they can take care of themselves. It's like in his mind just throw Israel under the bus because it doesn't really matter they can take care of themselves which blew me away I'm like how can you even say that we're totally connected with Israel and yet they would throw Israel under the bus which you know that's just administration's MO anyway yeah but wait a minute my dear lady without even asking or questioning that person that congressman I saw this and you have to say he was a democrat yes he was a democrat and there was another one that was point counterpointing with him, and I don't remember the names of them, but uh, mm -hmm. he was beside himself. He was like, oh, my gosh, we need to have congressional oversight. We need to have all these things that's against his, his powers as the president to even be able to do this, and yet here we are. Let me, he, let me and, ask and you this. Biden both said it was treasonous for Bush to do it even when he had congressional approval, and yet here they go. Oh, this, this president has absolutely abandoned the Constitution. This president yeah. is absolutely uh, utilizing not uh, executive powers, but kingmanship. This president absolutely is a rank amateur. But let me go back to the original points of concern that I have. Why, dear lady, why would anybody in their right mind any government tell the uh, the uh, country that they're going to have a uh, a bitter war and siege with? Why would you tell them what you're going to do, what your targets are, and how long you will hit them? Well, he's only telling them to give them fair warning so they can get out. I mean, why else would you tell them? They're your buddies, and you want to make sure they're not there when you hit them. This is this is almost to the point of obscene. I, I can't Absolutely. imagine anybody in their right mind, which leads me to another question about Obama, doing something so frivolous and stupid, and the consequences of his amateur approach, I think, are going to uh, go down in world history forever as being absolutely deadly. Well, you know, if he does it against all the military that is to totally telling him you're crazy, why would you even think of it? 
it's just like he, like they said up the news at the top of the hour. He has no interest in, in anybody's permission or what they think. He's going to do what he's going to do. Well, I'll tell you what, when I hear all these uh, past and present military men, whether it's Lieutenant Colonel Hunt, whether it's Lieutenant uh, Colonel Peters, or whether it happens to be Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, and I listen to all of them saying how amateur and absolutely unprofessional Obama is with world policy, wouldn't you think somebody would get the message? Well, you would hope so, but, you know, it's like I said, he has no interest in hearing from anyone. I agree. Thank you always for your call. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. Valley Wide Home and Ranch. My goodness, have you been in their newly remodeled store? Well, I want to tell you, they put a lot of time and effort into that store, and they've got everything for you. I mean, everybody seems to think, oh, they just got cattle feed, and they've got horse equipment. No, 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 no. There's everything over there. Your clothing, and they've got a hunting and fishing department, and they've got all the selections of pet foods, and they've got all the bug sprays. They've got everything. I mean, stop in and see for yourself. You'll find out what a great store it is for the family, the farm, and the ranch. It's all there at Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Really nice people that have taken a lot of time and, believe me, a lot of work to develop a store that's going to serve all your family members. Valley Wide Home and Ranch in Rupert. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Zeb, I'd like to urge everybody to contact their senators and representative by probably email. It'd be nice if we had a way to email the president or the White House for the president to back off and leave those people alone. It's tragic what they did, but, you know, we can't go over there and police the whole world. Joe, stop right there because I want to ask you a question. Uh, you, of course, have been on this God's great earth for a little longer than me, and you have more knowledge about what's happened in the past. Number one, this man, I think, is using a very fruitless and frivolous attempt to try to make uh, everybody in the world think that he's some kind of a superman, some kind of a super leader. And I think he's exhausting uh, the Constitution and, as a matter of fact, flushing the Constitution down the drain and using his uh, almost tyrannical and kingly powers uh, without going around Congress or to Congress. And to do this kind of thing with the consequences as to what could happen worldwide with a powder keg like the Middle East? I'm honestly, as a family man, a father, and a grandfather, I'm scared. I think he's out of his mind. If anybody knows how to email the president of the White House, I, let me know. I'll be the second one. To, it's, it's ridiculous. No, no, no. Like he, he talked to hit in the airport. Well, all they have to do is fly the airplane door to Iran and let them set over there and if they blow up the airport they can fix it in a day or two it's it's ridiculous to tell somebody what you're going to do before you do it. Absolutely, Joe. And, I'm uh, teamed up anyway. God bless you for your call. You mean a lot to us on this program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have a lot of respect for that man. A lot of respect for that man. It's ridiculous. It's... There are words I would like to use against Obama. Uh, the man is so repulsive to me. And he is so repulsive with his ideology. And to think that you would do something as frivolously stupid by telling the enemy or telling anyone what you're going to do, how long you're going to do it, and the duration. What? Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, we've got the inmates running the asylum, and he's, he's, he needs, you know, it's just unbelievable. But if you have to look at the big picture, uh, you know, we run out of Iraq, and as soon as the, you know, we, one civil war into the Afghan situation, we're trying to de escalate that. So we have to have another theater of operation to keep up with the, the game plan that we would be in a perpetual war someplace. Yeah, but, so uh, that but, part of the game plan has been all along. And because we give up a lot of our liberties and freedoms for security, supposedly, 
Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Adrian, you're, you're a student of politics. You are a student of what's happened. You are a student of what they're doing for a seven-letter word called control. And this situation right here is not just another happenstance. This situation in the Middle East right now with Syria being backed by the big granddaddy Iran that wants to see all these tumultuous things happen against their arch enemy, Israel, this is just nothing more than a domino effect to put us in, get us in deep, and then go after not only us, but literally kill Israel. And I think this administration should be held for treasonous charges against the Constitution and everything else. I absolutely detest what this man is doing. Yeah, we, we need to pull all of our troops out of there and just let them fight their civil wars out, protect the... Uh Suez Canal, so forth, because, until we get our energy uh, resources built up here. But, you know, it, it is, we don't even know for sure who gassed these people. That's right. We really don't know. That That's was the right. question that came up. We don't know if it was Assad or somebody else, because uh, ruthless people will do things against their own people and make it look like this is what Hitler did in the Reichstag building. He, he killed his own people to make it look like the communists, the Russians, had done that. Well, now, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And so this is, this is the kind of stuff that brings about real tyranny uh, and so forth. But it, you know, like you say, I, it, the, the man is totally incompetent, but I'm afraid the people that are the elitist behind the scenes you know, want, to, want this thing to escalate. Because they, they they finance both sides of it, so it's all about money, too. I agree. Adrian, i got to run and do a commercial, but thank you so much. I appreciate your good thoughts, as yeah, always. Yeah. Thank you. And, but, you know, right there along with what Adrian was saying, there's, there's another point there. I mean, before you jump into a fray as an assist or as a helper, don't you want to know who you're helping? Don't, it, it, okay, you go to a, a nightclub. Somebody jumps up and starts to fight. Well, the guy that he's fighting with is your neighbor. You're going to jump in and help your neighbor, aren't you? Okay. We don't even know who our neighbor is in this mess. We're not sure who they are. We don't know if they're freedom fighters that are going to support us. We don't know if they're Muslim Brotherhood. We don't know what is going on. Don't you kind of lay things out on the Parcheesi board and find out what's going on, what the effect is going to be, what the consequences are going to be, what's going to happen to our allies, etc., etc. But no. You jump up and you say, well, we're going to bomb you at a certain time. We're going to hit these targets. The idiocy and lunacy of the Democrats and Obama is absolutely appalling to me. Caller, I will uh, be with you momentarily, I think. We have another one waiting. But I want to tell everybody, oh, Jim McCall. Is Jim there this morning? Yes, Gina. he is. Ah, I almost messed up and went on and did the commercial. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here is Jim McCall, live and direct from Travel Loop Supply, 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn, with the Bubba Ropes. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Zeb. What are you doing? Well, I'm getting my blood pressure up as always. What can I do for <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah, good. Keeps you going that way. What's happening over at Travel Loop Supply? Hey, I want you guys to remember we got uh, hydraulic lines that we can fix. Okay. If you blow a hydraulic hose out on the deep digger, foot digger, give us a call. No. Tonight night, we're here, we'll get you taken care of. Well, now that is quite a service because, man, I'll tell you what, uh, there is nothing worse than be harvesting and then all of a sudden, bang, there you go with your hydraulics and you got to have somebody to help. Oh, what do they do, just call you? Just give us give a store a call if it doesn't go to somebody's store. We got it on call forwarding. It'll go to me. And hey, I have six toes on Sundays and Christmas Eve, and uh, we're here to here to serve. And I'll tell you, out, we'd sure like to do that. I'll tell you somebody else that's there to serve as the rest of the folks over there at Travel Loop Supply. Jim McCall has just got a great business, and uh, I think what we ought to do someday is uh, we'll get together with our Lincoln cordless grease guns and we'll have a battle up behind the store. How's that? <laughs> 
Sure, why not? Okay. And tell everybody <laughs> real quick, too, Jim, about how you clean those air filters. Tell us about that real fast. Well, we have an air filter cleaning service. We have, we'll come and pick up your dirty air filters off your big equipment. Uh, we have a process that those are uh, cleaned with air. We, we don't get them wet. They are not soaked or anything like that. We use air only, uh, so they're not damaged. Okay. And they're inspected uh, before they're repackaged. We then return them to you. Uh, you can save about half on the price of a new air filter. And these filters, if they're in good shape, can be cleaned several times. So Absolutely. Save you a lot of money. Absolutely. Jim McCall, Travel Loop Supply, 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn, and I can't let him go without saying Bubba Ropes one more time. Go ahead, Jim. Bubba Ropes. There, there you go, is. Bubba Ropes. It's going to be them pretty quick in Harvard. <laughs> Jim, thanks much at Travel Loop Supply. Talk to you later. Thank you. Hey, we'll see you. Good friend of mine, Jim McCall, right there. Hey, don't forget, it's time now for the Pacific Steel and Recycling Ag Minute. And they're located at 320 West Main in Burley, 678-2321. Here is the Ag Minute for this morning. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capital Press, the West Ag Weekly. Idaho potato growers starting early harvest say yields appear to be about average. Most are pleased with the size profile and quality of their crops. Several growers throughout the state have begun their early harvest a few days ahead of usual schedule, motivated by limited water supplies and an opportunity to capture high prices before the general harvest floods the market. USDA listed the price of five 10-pound mesh sacks of non-size A russet Norcotas out of the Twin Falls Burley District on August 27th at $9.50 to $11.50, though most saw prices top out at $11. Most growers now digging potatoes for processing haven't bothered to kill vines or toughen skins since their potatoes will be processed immediately. This is Hannah Browse. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. By the way, did you know that Pacific Steel and Recycling, you can get rid of all your old computers and electronics and old car batteries, and how about the old cars and trucks themselves? Absolutely. They pay top dollar for scrap iron, tin, aluminum cans, computers, batteries, cars, and so much more. Get a hold of them today. Nice people. 678-2321, the number Pacific Steel and Recycling, 320 West Main. In Burley. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Jeb. Yes, sir. Uh, one of our big problems is we've got a Secretary of Defense, Hagel. <laughs> I wouldn't trust him with a $3 cat fight in the middle of an alley because he don't know what in the hell's going on. He's letting it go on just like Korea, Vietnam, and everything else. He's letting Russia dictate what we're doing, and then they're advertising what we're going to do. You've seen it happen. Do you remember some of the past uh, Secretary of Defense people that held those positions? Who who comes to your mind as being someone that was tough and someone that stood up and said what he felt about certain things in the world? Who comes uh, to your mind? The one back in when it was... Uh Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he had one that was tougher than nails. Remember Rusk? Yeah. I mean, these people had an air about them. The air was that, no, you don't mess with the United States. No, you don't bully us around. No, you don't tell us what to do. That's gone. Well, I'd like to take and throw a challenge to our so-called Vice President Biden. Mr. Lippy Lauf, you took and made a comment during Bush's administration if he went into Iraq without the powers of the Congress, you would impeach him. Mr. Biden, do the same thing now to your so-called president. Yeah, but you know, here's, here's, doing the same thing. here's something else, though, too, Al. And I've got these things in front of me right now that uh, news from Congressman Mike Simpson. Simpson joins colleagues in requesting president, there's a key word, requesting, president to seek congressional approval before taking action in Syria. No, request, demand that the president <laughs> seeks congressional approval. What is it with these milk toast, spineless, three-piece suit, wink, tip shoes that they can't stand up for what the Constitution says. They don't care because they're more or less in the back pocket of the United or Russia 
and the communist uh, organizations. And it's time we put a stop. I am so fed up. Teach that man. I'm so fed up with the terminology. Uh, requesting. No, for heaven's sakes, demand that he follows the rules and regulations and laws of our country. Holy yeah, well, cow. Simpson, that's all he's done is just say, well, I'm going to request or I'm going to do this. He ain't going to damn thing about nothing, especially EPA. Ah, uh, don't get me started on them. Thank you very <laughs> Why much. Why not? You already got started. I know. God bless you, Al. Thanks. Hey, but, As but, always, but. thank you. Calls welcome, 436-2244. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. I love that, Al, don't you? He's a very good guy. Go ahead. What do you got to say? I got a lot of callers waiting. Go ahead. Okay, here's a scenario. Your kid's in school, say you're uh, 10, 12, 13, whatever, and you got somebody you don't like and he don't like you, and so you decide you're going to fight. And so you have a prescribed time that you get together and you're going to start the fight, and along comes the principal. In this case, it'd be Obama. And he said, oh, boys, don't fight, don't fight. Let's settle this in a pleasing manner. Now, you guys give each other a hug, and let's get back to work. So, reluctantly, the boys give him a hug, and as soon as, as, soon as he leaves, the boys look at each other and say, who the heck was this guy anyway? And they go back to fighting again. Yeah. And that's exactly what we've done in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we'll do it there, too. You know something, Keith? Your analogy is very well stated. It's It's been going on for thousands of years over there. And who are we and how dare we go in and think that a uh, surgical-type strike with missiles at a preordained time is going to do any doggone good? And another thing in this on this oil deal, you know, in the Second World War, the reason why General Rommel couldn't finish the battle was because he ran out of fuel. That's exactly and right. If we've got to depend on this Middle East for this, our president is the stupidest human being on this earth. I couldn't agree more. Rommel the Desert Fox, absolutely another good analogy. Keith, God bless you. Very well stated this morning. See Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. I couldn't believe this headline from Simpson. Joins colleagues in requesting. Oh, please, Mr. President, seek congressional approval before taking action in Syria. Requesting? Are you kidding me? Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, that, uh, you know... I heard Joe call in, and he's a great... I like Joe. He's a great guy. I, uh... And I, you know, let me tell you, I have been calling back there. I called the White House, and I got to the point where it was such a futile, you know, the one operator at the White House said to me, I says, how does the president know my feelings? How do you log all this information? And she was speechless. All it is is we think if we call in and, and, and we talk to somebody, we've done our job. I'm going to tell you. It don't work. If you don't talk directly to the person and he gets enough heat, that, that isn't going to change a thing. Obama will never change his mind. I don't care how many people call in unless he's going to be reelected or something else. Yeah, but wait a minute. I'm stop. not reelected. Now, I agree. I agree with what you're saying, Randy. But Joe, when he called in this morning, uh, I, I know I felt it. I know you felt it. There was a, a pull on the heartstrings with Joe to the point where uh, there's a guy that loves America. There's a guy that loves everything this country stands for. There's a man that absolutely is worried and concerned about a frivolous, very amateuristic approach to trying to handle world affairs. And I, I, I almost was brought to tears when Joe said it in his very low, very bass voice about calling and letting our congressmen and others know that this president has got to follow the rules, got to realize the consequences, and I, like Joe, I'm sitting here and I'm very nervous and I'm very afraid as a father and a grandfather that this complete incompetency that we have now in the White House is going to doom us all to failure. Well, this is the thing. So many people of that generation are principled men, and they cannot understand the dishonest, unprincipled, soulless 
a shell of a man that is running this country. And, and, and to think that, he, again, he, he, he's an anarchist and that's all he is. He's going to crush this deal come hell or high water. I agree. And see, it's hard to understand that there could be such a person inhabiting the White House and the presidency. But this guy, you see, we have only ourselves to blame for allowing this to occur. And uh, this is a reason free will. And God says, well, you, you guys are in charge of your own destiny down there. You better, I guess, if you care to do something about it, you better pull her together. And I don't know that there's enough of us to do it, but I hope there is. Well, I pray also. But, you know, when I was talking about Mike Simpson and this letter, and yes, I'm being critical of Mike Simpson, uh, I have no reason not to. Because when it says here that Idaho Congressman Mike Simpson joins fellow members of Congress in signing a letter to the President of the United States regarding the use of military force in Syria, members are requesting President Obama seek congressional authorization before ordering the use of U.S. military force. Requesting? Randy! They should be demanding to this man. I'm telling you, man. It's just like I keep saying over and over again. It's like the bully or it's like a guy in school. You have time you go to school, he's got your corner, he's giving you a hard time, he wants you to fight him. And this, and I'm telling you, Obama just keeps pushing and we don't push back. He's going to push. Can you think of what he has gotten away with? Absolutely. Whether or not it lies or forcing bills through Congress, whatever, the executive orders, this guy is on a tour and we stand, still stand here and treat him like he deserves respect. Yeah. Randy, I appreciate your call. You Thank you, my friend. Bye. Twin Falls County Fair is off and running, and I'll tell you what, they've got so much going on. Tonight's going to be the first performance of the Magic Valley Stampede PRCA Rodeo. Last night, they had the All-Star Monster Truck Tour. I heard a lot of things about that. Wow, they had fun over there. And don't forget, too, they got concerts. As a matter of fact, on Sunday, they're going to have the Craig Morgan concert at 7.30 p.m. Oh, this guy is good with a lot of 14 top 10 hits. He can sing. You're going to enjoy the music. Don't forget all the livestock exhibits. Don't forget they're going to have magical acts. They're going to have all kinds of comedy and hypnotists. All of this and more at the Twin Falls County Fair all the way up till September 2nd at the Twin Falls County Fairgrounds. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. What about you, Mr. Family Man? What about you, Mom? What about you, Grandpa and Grandpa, aunts and uncles? How concerned are you right now? Right now, that this president, in an extremely amateuristic way, trying to play like the, uh, the town bully right now, telling Syria, well, we'll hit you here, we'll bomb for so long, etc., and win. This is idiocy and incompetency. And other members of the military have spoken out and said exactly what they think of this man. They don't think much of Obama. Do you realize the consequences that could come forth from this? Economic consequences to us, to us, you and I. The economic consequences with the rate of inflation and what it'll do to oil and gas prices, what that will do with a trickle-down effect in increasing and just creating an insurgence of higher prices on everything. The consequences of getting sucked into a portion of the world where you can never win a war. I'll say it again. You can never win a war. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning. I have got to admit there's one person that evidently is living in the United States that loves Obama, and that's Soros. He's never in his life had such a wonderful puppet yeah. as Obama. Yeah. yeah. George Soros is uh, another uh, very detestable personality that I'd talk about on another time. Uh, Right now, I am more concerned, Helen, than ever that this leadership, so-called leadership, of our country is going to create dire consequences that will last for many, many generations to come. We'll never get over it. 
I agree. The only thing that's going to save this uh, United States is, or the world is the second coming of Christ. No oh. argument from me whatsoever. Thank you very much, Helen. God I'm bless you. Ask you. Do you have your year's supply of food and water and fuel? Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, fuel? <laughs> no. Fuel? No, I do not. No way in the world do I have a... I don't even have 30 days supply of fuel. Not with the way things are going, I'll tell you that. You're going to have to dig your own oil well, aren't you? I'm going to have to make sure I got the buckboard and the Clydesdales. <laughs> hey, drop by. All right, thanks a lot. See you later. Thank you. Say bye. Caller, I've got to ask your indulgence. Just please have patience with me. I've got to get the weather forecast in here right now quickly. Brought to everybody by Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls, 737-9900. Sportsman's Warehouse carries only the top quality products for the serious outdoor enthusiast. The great indoors for those who love the great outdoors, whether it's hunting, fishing, archery, camping, boating, everything is there for you with their friendly experts at Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. Here now is Michael Rogers with a weather update. Hey, everybody. Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com. It's one of those days where you thought it was going to cool off and we were done with summer. Wrong. We're going to see hot temperatures, low 90s for today, a lot of sun, very little clouds. This is going to stay with us all the way through Sunday. So... Have a nice day. Enjoy the weather. It is the only weather you've got. Thank you, Michael. Brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. Sportsman's Warehouse, the great indoors for those who love the great outdoors. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. They are requesting. They are be demanding. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, they handle the purse strings. Why not? Uh, grab them and close it up. You know, Fred, if in your lifetime, with all the presidents that you have seen and all the presidents that I have seen, that have had to go through the proper constitutional channels to do something, and Congress acts like a little puppy dog that just peed on the floor in requesting the president, they should be absolutely beating their shoe on the desk demanding this man follow procedure. Yeah, he's a dictator, and they're following him. It's so detesting to me and so disgusting that the American public is letting this man get away with this kind of thing. What happened to pride in America? Well, here's the thing. Our, uh, our Senate and the House is letting him get away with it. Yes. What, what the devil's wrong with them? There is no backbone, no spine, there is nothing there that should let these people stay in office. They can stop him. That's right. They have the power to shut this man down if they would just get tough. I couldn't agree with you more, and I'm so disgusted when I hear language like requesting the president for... Pete's sakes, they should be, like the word has been used many times, demanding. Yeah. God bless you, Fred. Thank you. And I mean that. Have a great day. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you. I'm just livid about this mess. The con And I don't want anybody out there in the audience. And by the way, audience, where are the liberals? Where are the Democrats? Hello? It is... 849 in the Magic Valley in this time zone. Where are you? Why can't you speak out? Why can't you defend this idiocy and this amateur policy through Obama? Oh, golly, I'm giving you a format, but you never take advantage of it because you have no backbone and no spine. You'd rather backbite and chew people out like me behind the scenes and condemn and damn us, but you don't have any backbone to call into a program like this and say why you could possibly defend this incompetency. And I'm really upset about this. This isn't theatrical one way or another. This is the way I feel. I give a forum for these people, and I've invited them on my program, and they will not take it, but they'd rather backbite. They'd rather go to my sponsors and complain. But they don't have the backbone to do it face-to-face -face or earlobe to earlobe talking to each other on the radio. No guts. None. 
Call is welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. We goofed yesterday, and I missed Sharon Hardy Mills' birthday. And she had, along with Gina, run the program for me last Thursday. And I meant to wish Sharon Hardy Mills a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. And I missed that. And Sharon, if you're listening this morning, happy birthday to you a day late. Because we are with you are? Yes. A little preview. Yep. Sharon, have that cake. Eat all of it, sweetheart. Oh, yes, at JB's, baby. Yeah, with ice cream on top. I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. i got to get some of these other stories in real quick. Uh, Muslim killer Nadal Hassan gets the death penalty. What does that mean? What does that mean, really? Think about it. And don't go, well, Zab, come on. He's was probably he, going to be alive for at least 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Was he tried in a, uh, a military trial? Yeah, and you know what? I doubt seriously he has the appeals. I've listened to the broadcast. I've called some of the experts. And with the appeals, he might be living in his confines, eating on our money, enjoying life for another 20 years. And I'm saying, no, this is enough. Tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m., that's it. I would love to see that happen, honestly. I would really, really love to see that happen. Unfortunately, probably you are right, and he's going to be living off our dime with all of the appeals. Although, why is he appealing? Did she th- he okay. admitted to it. He there you wants go. This. There you go. He wants to. Yeah, he wants to go to Allah. He wants to go to his little universe in the sky. So you know what? Let him go. How many Let virgins did they promise him? Oh, like forty-two or whatever. I yeah. don't know. I don't care. It's Holy just, smokes! You know? I mean, just just let him go. Who does he, he think he is? Go? Hugh Hefner. <laughs> well, he wears the silk pajamas. Yeah, but I'll tell you something. How do you, and you, you touched on it, how do you qualify for any appeals to a death sentence whatsoever when, A, you went into court acting as your own legal representative yeah. and admitted to the court, the judge, and all the world that you had done this heinous crime and you were convicted of this heinous crime, but now you are afforded the appeals that are going to cost the American taxpayers, literally, millions and millions of dollars so that you can sit there and smirk at us. And a $3.70 bullet tomorrow at 3 would solve the whole problem. Uh, well, you have to just make sure you rub it in some uh, pork grease first. Please. Uh, uh, you know, okay, so he acted as his, own, as his own, own attorney. He admitted to the crime. He admitted that it was a pre-planned event. Absolutely. It was not something that he did in the heat of the moment. It was a terrorist act. It was a terrorist act. He admitted to it, and he has been, you know, just snubbing his nose at the entire judicial system the entire time. And, He's and, made a mockery of it, and, you know, just just get rid of him. Put him uh, in the chair, give him the needle, give him a bullet. I don't care. Get rid of him. You know what I think should be done, and I don't care how caustic or hardcore this sounds, okay. I think that the execution should be on nine one one. You know, I think that honestly would be fitting. It would be kind of a, a, a cleansing. It would, you know, it would. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you on that. Nine one one at exactly nine. the same hour yeah. that the planes hit our country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And people are starting to forget that. Yeah. People are starting to forget. It should be, and I've said this. Deanne knows I've said this publicly, and I've said it on the radio many, many times. I think that those tapes of uh, those two planes hitting our Twin Towers should be shown every single day with our national anthem and our Pledge of Allegiance right behind it so that yeah. people remember. They remember the heinous act of killing over 3,000 people at absolute unnecessarily maiming, killing, and destroying in the name of nothing more than their political beliefs. I, I, I completely agree because every time... Every time I see those videos, I cry. Every time I think of that day, I think of all of the innocent people that perished, the people that were jumping out of the windows of, you know, 50 Absolutely. floors up. Come on, really? Think, remember that. Can and you remember the mindset? Think of the mindset. And this is something that has stayed with me, and I'm glad you mentioned that. 
When I was watching that tape that morning, I was getting in preparation for this program, okay? And there were numerous news interruptions, and so we had a small television, so I could follow it right here. Uh, and and I, I watched this one person climb out, uh, you could see it vaguely, the shadow effect, on the ledge, mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that he had no option. He was either going to burn to death in that building or suffer through the total collapse and devastation yep. and possibly very slow death yep. of being crushed upon with the building and everything else or Jump. jumping to his death. Yep. And can you imagine the mindset of that person at that particular time? I... I could not imagine. I don't want to imagine. But I think at that point in time, you are just saying your goodbyes mentally. You're preparing yourself, and you just do it. I, I agree Honestly. with that. But then on the other Who's hand, call, by the way? Uh, on the other hand, quickly, I'll say this. To let someone like Nadal Hassan make abuse of our system and live is beyond the pale. I, Caller, I, I'm going to ask your indulgence. Stay with me just 30 seconds. I've got to tell everybody about your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, our major sponsor, serving you with the best in tires, with the best tire value promise, the best in brake service, the best in front end alignment, shocks and struts, everything, batteries, but always, always to you the best in service. Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell. Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Lane and Rupert, John on Pauline, and Randy and Burley, the best, bar none, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Caller, I've got one minute left, real fast. It'll be real fast. They will never do anything on 9-11 because it might offend some Muslim from having their, what do you want to call it? Well, I think what you're trying to say is that uh, we're more uh, concerned about political correctness than we are doing what's right. That's very true. All right, Dell. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, I'd give him an appeal. What's your appeal? Well, I'd like to live a day longer. Nope, sorry, turn down that appeal. Bang. It's over. And by the way, I want to make this quick note. Yesterday, the Martin Luther King Jr. March, uh, that celebration, if you will, some of the speeches were absolutely racist and bigoted. One of the people that absolutely needs to be condemned is Mark Morrill, a black commentator that stood up there and did nothing but preach hate and preach racism. That's not what that day was for, and it was despicable. I'll be back in six. Oh my, welcome back. Number two is the hour, and number one is our sponsor, and that, of course, is your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Number one everywhere you go, you betcha they really care. All seven great locations. And, of course, some of our great advertisers include your Magic Valley uh, Lee's Furniture at 459 Overland in Burley, and our dear friends at Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. and garbage. Everybody's always saying, how in the world? What in the world? What am I going to do? Well, you call Western Waste Services at 734-6969. They are always at your disposal. They've got all those dumpsters in various sizes. And then, of course, get on the route service. And every week they'll be there right on time. Boy, they're good. Getting rid of all your garbage. Absolutely. And they've got the porta potties too. I know they've got all the uh, porta potties for parties and companies and special events. Please Please call them and talk to them today. Great people, 734-6969. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get our guest on with the Chamber of Commerce, I want to remind you, too, about Joel Heward, owner and manager of Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. They believe that every life is worth remembering. And during a very critical time for the family and trying to get all the items put together and dot the I's and cross the T's, please let them help. They always uphold the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity, and they give you and your family the best possible support and comfort. Joel Heward, 
and, of course, his staff at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636. Time for the Chamber of Commerce report, and now we go over to the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce office and the lovely, vivacious... What's your name? Oh, Kay Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Zeb. How are you? I'm good, and you? I could not be better. Thank you very much for asking. What's going on at the chamber? Oh, well, it's a beautiful day. I want to wish all you listeners out there a safe and enjoyable Labor Day weekend coming up this weekend. I know for a lot of people it's going to be a long weekend, and that's great. I hope everybody's safe. I hope they get out there and enjoy this beautiful community. And good luck to everybody who starts school next week in Cajun County. And, and for all of you listeners in Minidoka County, um, I, I hope you're enjoying school this week as they started up just last week. So um, it's always great this time of year as fall comes along to see the kids get back to school, see the school buses out. Uh, my office right next to the Habern Elementary, it's just an enjoyable thing when you walk outside and you hear all the kids out on the playground. It just, it, It's just fun and exciting. Absolutely, but then also with that goes a lot of caution because when you drive by and or near school zones, please watch out for the kids because they're too busy with their own thoughts to watch out for you. Absolutely. Um, go extra slow and look an extra time. And we just want to make sure that everybody's safe and, and wish everybody a good, um, like I said, a good safe weekend and a good school year. Absolutely. Now, another thing, too, uh, surely you're not all done with special projects for 2013. Oh, no. We've always got lots of things going on coming up later this month. We're meeting... Um, in Twin Falls with our Chamber Alliance, and we invite anybody who wants to come and participate with us. We're going to be talking about possible upcoming legislative issues that will be affecting our area businesses and a great opportunity to address issues that you're concerned about with your business and talk about the things that um, really affect your bottom line with your business. And those are the issues that we want to hear about and discuss. And so we invite anybody who wants to get more information to contact me at the Chamber of Commerce. All right. Any uh, great big fall doings coming up that you want to kind of highlight before the fact? Well, we have our our annual Farmer Business Appreciation Banquet, and that's not till November, but we are soliciting nominations. So if anybody knows... A person who should be recognized as either the business person of the year or the farmer of the year, please contact us and so we can get you a nomination form that identifies the criteria that we're looking for and because we do need to get those nomination forms in. All right. And all they have to do is to do what to contact you and the chamber? Give us a call at 208-679-4793. Stop by and see us. We're located at 1177 7th Street in Hayburn. You can find us on the web at manycatcherchamber.com or like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. There you go. The lovely Kay Cameron, director of the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Always a very pleasant lady to visit with. Thanks, Kay. God bless. Have a good week. Thanks, you too. All right, thank you. Uh, we got a few minutes here right now. I want to kind of go over, and by the way, Gina, uh, closed circuit message to Gina. Yeah. The answer to your question on my text, of which I'm not smart enough to text back, is yes. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, set <laughs> okay. it up. We'll make All it right. happen. I want to remind everybody that uh, I put out a blog every week, and it has grown in popularity. It is sponsored by uh, Tires West, Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center, Tires West on Overland and Burley. And some of our other great sponsors include Max at Magic Valley Tire, the Twist family, and Lane at Magic Valley Tire and Rupert. So we want to say thank you to those three for helping uh, sponsor our blog, Cow Pies and Coffee Cups. Now, what we're going to be doing is in a couple of volumes, it's going to turn 100. Yep, we're going to have our 100th blog here in just a couple of weeks. And we're celebrating, and we're going to be giving away a huge prize. I'm not talking about a piece of pie. I'm talking about something really nice. And uh, one of our lucky subscribers is going to win. But there's still time for you to become a winner and uh, get on the blog, zebbell.com, and sign up for Cow Pies and Coffee Cups. And 
and you'll be eligible to win. We're going to draw the name on the air live in a couple of weeks. So go to zebbell.com and be sure and sign up for Cow Pies and Coffee Cups now, real quick, and you might be the lucky winner. Also, I uh, want to remind you that on Labor Day evening at 5 o'clock, sign up at the Jerome County Fairgrounds. There's going to be another big team roping put on by our good friend, Dave Zanino. And it's going to be a 3 for 20 draw pot. Enter up to five times. They'll rope at 6 on Monday evening, Labor Day. And Aragas is going to have a customer appreciation celebration on September 6th at 11 to 3. Uh, barbecue, raffle prizes, live demos, and they're going to be giving away some door prizes. And, of course, along with the Firefighters Coats for Kids Foundation, Airgas is heavily involved, and we just want to say thank you for your involvement in helping for the Coats for Kids Foundation. Let's see what else have I got here this morning that we have to mention. Oh, and we had Michael Greenwell on the other day and they're going to be starting on September 4th the Financial Peace University very interesting very interesting and the number to call 678-2759 and those are a couple of items that are coming up that you should be a part of and be aware of there you go now let's take a look and see if we're ready to go with Karen over at Rock Creek Growers and see no, if she's not on no dial. not Let me yet. Dial. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll give another commercial and then we'll be ready. How's that? Maybe. Perfecto. Okay, perfecto. I like that. Live radio at its best. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, let's ride. Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley, 436-4771. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, they've got all the new ATVs in there. All the 2014 bikes are coming in, the dirt bikes, street bikes. And now is the time to go buy one. Great, great selection. And you got to try out the Can-Am four-seater side-by-side. Woo! That is so much fun. And the new Yamaha Viking side-by-side. -side. They've got them all right there for you at Let's Ride. And don't forget the sleds are right around the corner. And a great service department, too. Let's Ride, where the fun is sold. Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. You stop over and see those wonderful people today. All right, let's see what our dear, beloved Gina has to say. Is our lady ready? Uh, Cindy is running like mad to go get Karen because Cindy is just afraid. Oh, hold on. I've got Karen on the line, so hold you on. You do have Karen. My goodness sakes. Ladies and gentlemen, they already have played like track stars over there to go get Karen. No, they wouldn't do it, but they said Karen will. Good morning at Rock Creek Growers. Hello, Karen. <laughs> Hi, Seb. How are you guys doing? I'm good. You know, uh, I would imagine, as you look now at the weather, sure, we're expected to have a couple of more hot days, but, you know, we're getting into a change, and we're going to start seeing the fall. We're going to start seeing the corn stalks. We're going to start seeing the pumpkins. What do you got planned for this fall? I mean, gosh, I'm just hoping that the weather cools down. It's been so hot. Um, you know, we plan our Oktoberfest the 1st of October, um, but uh, right at this point, um, you know, we're still hoping that the weather will cool down and, you know, we can move trees and shrubs and stuff before we um, see too much of the real cold temperatures coming in. So. Mm -hmm. Well, now, when you say this, Karen, when you say right now, uh, I don't think we're going to see these 90s stay very much longer, and nor does my weatherman, Michael Rogers. But uh, what should people be aware of right now? What's going on over at Rock Creek Growers that still they have the time to take care of in 2013? Well, we are in uh, the last of our what we call dog day summer, mm -hmm. uh, and everything is 35% off, so that's all plant material. So if you're even thinking about um, trying to do some fall work, it's an excellent time. Now, we are going to be closed this weekend because of Labor Day. So we'll be closed Saturday through Monday. So because of that being the holiday and whatnot, we're going to continue to sell into the first week of September. So if anybody is wanting to get out and plant some trees, some vines, or some new shrubs, you know, whether you're planting a new landscape or just trying to get rid of some old, overgrown, and put in some new fresh stuff, um, they can take advantage of that discounted price. Okay, and believe me, knowing how hard and how many hours you put in over there working at Rock Creek Growers, you deserve to sit down in the shade this weekend with a big old lemonade and let the rest of the family wait on you. 
We are looking forward to a couple days. We only take a couple holidays a year, and, and Labor Day has always been one of them because at this point, uh, Labor Day and Fourth of July, it just seems like everybody's ready for a break. So well, uh, thank you. I'm going to enjoy it immensely. All right. Now, what about uh, things that they can still plant? I mean, I had notes about various shrubs and trees and fall grasses. Anything else that still they can come in and take a look at and say, hey, we better get this done? You know what? We can we can here in our valley, we can plant up until the ground freezes. Uh-huh. The advantage of planting right now versus waiting till November to plant is, you know, your trees are going to get established, your roots are going to start getting established, um, and it just gives the plants, you know, some time to kind of get their feet, you know, settled in. You know, we always call the roots their feet, but kind of let the plants get settled in a little bit before the winter hits. So, um, you know, we just encourage people, if at all possible, you know, by the 1st of October, if you're just wanting to do um, revamp your yard and do things like that or plant an extra tree for shade, take advantage of it during September. If you're doing a new landscape, just try to get it in as early as you can. All right. And if they have questions, they can call the wonderful Anderson family right there at 423-6800. They are located, this is heaven, right there at the furthest southeast corner of Kimberly, corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly, Rock Creek Growers. Karen, God bless you, and we'll be in touch, and I hope you have a very relaxing Labor Day weekend. I will, and same to everybody out there. All right, thank you so much. Rock Creek Growers, uh-huh. and they are, of course, the sponsor of Michael Rogers Weather. Oh, my, let's see what else have I got here for you real quick. Um, let's see. We will not, we will not be having a program on Monday. Gina deserves a break. I'm going to be gone, and we will not have a program on Labor Day. I wanted to mention that to you. Uh, people like Frosty Woolridge and Alliance Defending Freedom and some of the other segments that we have uh, will not be on Monday, and uh, we're going to take a little extended weekend ourselves. Hey, I've got a question for you. Who let these doggone dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Where'd that dog come from? Whose Doberman is this? Who's the Chihuahua belong to? Good morning, Ken Mort. My goodness sakes, with Minidoka Animal Control, what is happening in your world today? Hey, good morning, Zeb. Uh, actually, on that, uh, a whole lot going on and stuff. And that we uh, actually sent 17 dogs yesterday to a rescue up in Montana. Uh, they've pretty much all of them have uh, got homes up there once they get up there. So. It's, it's been a busy week already. Well, now, wait a minute. Tell me about this now. How did they, up in Montana, know what you had and whether they would fit the bill or not? Um, actually, they check out our Facebook page, Minidoka Joint Powers Animal Control and Shelter. Mm-hmm. And they look through uh, our adoptable dogs and turn around and get in contact with one of our volunteers. It helps, uh, helps us try to get rescues and stuff to come in and uh, take these dogs and... Uh, a lot of the dogs that they get uh, from us, and that wind up going to ranches or to uh, good homes up there. Now, how many did you say? Seventeen. What did you do? Uh, book a freight liner to take them up there? What did you do? Nope. Loaded them up in the back of a uh, pickup in uh, travel kennels and transported them up there. Holy buckets. I mean, there was a whole lot of yipping and yapping going on for 500 miles. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and they all went to good homes, huh? Yes, they did. That is great. Well, what else is cooking? Have you got the dog of the week for us? I do. Uh, her name is Tiff, also known uh, by us now as uh, Ginger. The owner actually came and uh, that uh, dropped off out back, uh, come in one day earlier this week to find out if we'd found her a home yet, and mm-hmm. informed us that her name is Ginger. And uh, so uh, she is a boxer lab cross. Oh, my. She's about uh, four to five months old. Uh-huh. Uh, real friendly, likes to play, loves to cuddle. And then, I mean, you pick her up and uh, she just cuddles into your into your neck. I mean, she's a real sweetheart of a dog. Uh, she's been doing pretty good on a leash since I started working with her with a leash. And, I mean, she, she'll make somebody a great pet. You know something? You ought to try a dog uh, on a leash that's never been on a leash before when you're on crutches. 
Um, I'll pass. No, I think you should. Because it's not good, it's not safe, and it can actually hurt your Blue Cross Blue Shield coverage. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, so if anybody's interested in any of the dogs that we've got, uh, that they can check out our Facebook page, see what we've got, or they can contact me uh, at 438-2200 or on my cell phone at 678-7268. Now, you take pictures of all the dogs and have kind of a little personality uh, forum about them, is that right? Uh, we, we try to. Um, we've actually uh, got a volunteer uh, that comes in uh, when she's got some time and does evaluations on a lot of the dogs for us so that we can get uh, wow. a little more information on them, especially those that we just either pick up or get dumped out back that we don't get anything on. You know, let's talk about that for a second because there is a subject that just makes me plumb mad. People that will come from the city and they'll go out in the country and they'll drop dogs and kitty cats off and think, well, yeah, the people in the country, they can just go ahead and take care of them. And first of all, it's very dangerous because when they drop these animals off, they're not attuned to the traffic and everything else going on out in the country. They're not attuned to where to go, what to do, etc. It's dangerous and it's very inhumane. It is. Plus, you don't know how they're going to react around any of the farm animals that are out there, like your cows and horses yeah. and stuff like that. So, I mean, you, uh, and I mean, a lot of people don't realize that if uh, if uh, somebody who has livestock out there sees a dog start to chase after their uh, after their livestock, they uh, they actually have by law and at the uh, authority to go ahead and shoot those dogs. Yeah, and so, I mean, it's it's really inhumane and stuff, and that for them to just take them out and dump them, they'd, they'd better off if they bring them to. Uh, one of the shelters or the dog pound or, uh, or that so that we can we can actually work with them and find them home. You've got to have a heart as big as Texas doing what you do because, man, you got to really love animals. Oh, I do. I mean, when we have to put one down for being vicious or extremely ill, it, just, it breaks my heart. Absolutely. Well, now, uh, is there anything else you want to tell the public right now? we got about a minute left about Minidoka Animal Control and Ken Mort. Actually, um, we're still looking for uh, for donations and stuff like that. Uh, we're still trying to get our uh, get some more kennels and stuff in that so that we can be able to move into a newer facility and at a bigger facility so that we'll be able to house more dogs and not be overcrowded like we are. Uh, so if, any, if anybody in Stephanette can uh, help out in any way, shape, or form, even if it's just bringing in a uh, bag of dog food or uh, some old blankets or towels or anything like that, we'd greatly appreciate anything that they can, they can uh, help us out with. Now, right there is a point that I'm glad you brought up uh, real quick that, yeah, if people, you know, they can't do certain things, but they could help with maybe a little assistance for the kennel itself, like with dog food. Uh, maybe when they go to the grocery store and they buy a bag of dog food for their dogs, buy another bag and donate it to the Minidoka Animal Control. Exactly. I, it, I've actually had uh, Valley Wide and uh, Cal Ranch uh, both call me up telling me that I needed to come in and pick up some uh, dog food that somebody turned around and bought and wanted us to, uh, or uh, wanted them to donate it to us and everything, so I went and picked it up. Tell you what, Ken, you're doing a great service and a great job, and we always look forward to having you on the program, and I want to wish you a great Labor Day weekend with you and your family. Thank you so much. You have a great weekend, too, Zip. God bless you. Who let those dogs out? Uh, Ken Mort, he's been a good friend of mine for years and years. Does a great service over there. Thank you very much. Hey, don't forget our friends, uh, Cameron and Siemens Insurance. With life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. My goodness sakes, Dean Cameron, Todd Siemens. Mm -hmm. They are really concerned and focused on your successful future. All you have to do is call them and say, you know what? I need coverage. I better protect myself, my family, and my business. 436-4424, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Please, please get a hold of them today. Really nice people. Let's see, what else have I got cooking here right now that I need to take care of? I'm, uh, I'm running, actually. For the uh, first time in a long time, I'm running early. It feels so strange. <laughs> hey, we've got lunch bunch today. 
I want to remind you, we're going to be at JB's 136 East 5th North in Burley. Daniel and the rest of the crew are going to be at Lunch Bunch at 1130, and I certainly hope Gina can make it over there today and celebrate with us. We're going to have lots of door prizes, too, giving away thanks, compliments of Smith's Food King and Walmart, and just kind of a great gathering right there at JB's in Burley, 136 East 5th North. You stop in and visit with us today at Lunch Bunch, okay? Uh, you got anything special for us this morning? Um, I'm hungry. Yeah, but that's not for 30 minutes yet. <laughs> You're stealing the thunder. No, I know, no, I, I don't have anything special going on. Hey, by the way, uh, thanks, and we might as well tell everybody, oh, yeah. you have kind of lined up, uh, thanks to me having a dead spot at 1030, uh -huh. John McEwen, uh, yeah. uh, one of the originals, I believe, of the Nitty yeah. Gritty Dirt Band. Yes, um, I am uh, trying to get a hold of his promoter and uh, to get him on the air at 1030. So I'm still working on that. And when I get the absolute confirmation, I will text you okay. and let you know. Just don't expect a text back. <laughs> no, I, I never do expect okay. a text back. Now, we've got Fred calling in. Okay, real quick. I've only got about 30 seconds. Fred, good morning. You're on the air. Hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Hey, uh... When are you going to come out to your post meeting? I, the Legion post. I... We need to have you come out. Any time, any time that you are having a meeting and you want me there, I will try to be there. Just let me know. Give me a couple days advance notice. I will. Uh, we'll start up again our meetings here this fall. All right. So, Zeb... We want to have you there. I will be. You just give okay, me a call. Well, give me. I'll give you a call. All right. You give me a day's notice, and I'll find my old fat stubby body. will be there. Sounds like a winner. All right, Fred. Thank you, you so much. Been to a meeting yet. I know, and I apologize, but you call me, and I'll be there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye. Uh, calls welcome, and I think right now we're going to scoot over to Ramsey Heating and Electric, and we're going to visit with a lovely lady. I just love visiting with her because, man, she's going to tell it like it is. She's not going to mince words. She's not going to sit there and kind of cover everything up. She's going to tell you, and that's the way it should be. Good morning, Rita Ramsey. Good morning. How are you doing today? Well, okay, you asked. I'm going to tell you. I'm very, very worried, nervous, and even a little bit scared as to what this administration is going to get us into with a very thoughtless approach in Syria. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, I... I figured, and I my feelings were, is that he would go in and launch a few missiles and say I did something and da da da, da, da you know, and it I I did my thing. I I I followed through, and then I got to thinking, you know, um, they're saying now that if we do that, then they'll bomb Israel and everything else, and and it. I think if if they if we actually do that, we head into World War Three. And it's really a bad time to do it because it's just prior to 9/11, and it makes you kind of wonder in doing something like that to a Muslim, uh, a Muslim community, if the other Muslims are going to say 9/11. That's our that's our lovely date. They like that date. They use it. They it's like whenever we can do anything on 9/11, we will. And maybe they would do something. However, my husband had a different take on it, and I kind of think there might be something to it, knowing Obama the way that we do, and that is. He said, my take on it is that Obama is having all of these uh, congressmen and stuff saying, hey, you have to check with Congress first or get approval. And it's kind of like, okay, here's his out. He'll go to them and they'll say, no, you better not do it. And so he'll say, oh, I wanted to do something there, but the Congress wouldn't let me. So, you know, I, I did my part and they just wouldn't let me follow through with it. And, and hopefully he'll do that and avoid any kind of blame because he does not take blame for anything. Okay, first of all, 
Uh, a couple of things that I'd like to respond to as to what you said. Number one, this man, Obama, and his administration, I think, have approached this problem in the worst, most amateuristic way ever possible. Uh, they haven't looked at the consequences. They haven't looked at the net effect on the economies of the world, let alone us. They haven't looked at the effect as to what it's going to do to other nations, i.e., our biggest uh, ally in that area, Israel. They haven't even hardly checked with them whatsoever. And all of these things have been done in kind of a very poor, amateur, slipshod fashion. And then, when I picked up the notice that was sent to me from Congressman Mike Simpson's office that uses this verbiage, I was infuriated. It says in the headline, Simpson joins colleagues in requesting president to seek congressional approval. Rita requesting the word should have been replaced with demanding for Pete's sakes. Absolutely, they they need to say uh, they need to let him know who's in charge, and it's not him. He thinks he is. The other thing that I think is really quite curious is um, if you look back at the history of um, uh, FDR and and uh, Wilson. Their economies were in such horrible, horrible yes. shape. They were broke. They were out of money. And the only thing that they could do was go to war to, to pull it out. And it just starts making you think, you know, they've been watching their playbooks pretty closely with the way they're doing things. No, we're not going to do this because we don't want the economy to get going because then people won't depend on us quite so much. And, and we won't be in control. And and uh, so you know a war is the only thing that helps and it kind of makes you wonder if they want to get into war well i'm just going to say this and and you i don't think uh, will disagree with me i have had some other people on my program in the last couple of days that disagreed with my thinking on this and i'm going to lay this scenario out to you and see what your thoughts are number one uh, obama when he ran for office the first time said that he was absolutely going to be in favor of electricity rates going his words sky high and skyrocketing in price Not number two yes yes number two he said that he wanted to see oil and gas prices go up to the point where we were basically on the same competition price level as Europe now all that being said we are looking at a real tightening of oil supplies coming out of the Straits of Hormuz and possibly through the Suez Canal if this conflagration turns into a full-fledged war over in the Middle East. That serves the purpose of exactly what Obama wants to do with the furtherance of his green energy versus fossil fuels. And I'm beginning to think more so every day that I'm right and a lot of these pundits are wrong. This is all fitting into a puzzle that he's got and he's putting on and fits like a glove. Oh, everything their administration does is calculated. Somebody has a plan. They say, okay, let's go to this map and follow it. There, there's nothing done on spur of the moment. It's all calculated, and I, I think that you could be right in that respect because they have tried to do it, and prices aren't as high as they had wanted them to go. Absolutely. We have a caller with a question. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hey, Zeb, I think there's another scenario we need to look at on this thing as well. Uh, Russia and China have said they're against this. Uh, Russia has also said that they have two submarines in that area. I think we need to watch for that, so I'll listen. Now, there's a very interesting point, uh, Russia and China. And uh, needless to say, neither one of them are going to lose any sleep if uh, something happens to be negative against the United States. Uh, what are your thoughts about what the caller just said as far as having submarines in the area that might be entangled and twisted into a conflagration with Syria? Oh, I, I don't doubt for a minute that there aren't uh, submarines in there and they're keeping an eye on things so that if they need to do something... However, I, I was listening this morning when I came in to work on a, a XM radio station, and the, um, they were having a little discussion about that. And one says, well, you know, what about Russia? And somebody says, you know what, Russia probably doesn't want to be, be in war. They don't, they don't have any reason they want to be in war. They're, they don't have money. There's, there's no reason why they should do it. Putin's in charge, and, and he's got things just the way he wants it in Russia. And the other one is, is that China, their economic... Um, 
you know, engines are running and, and they're actually leading the way in economics. So why would they want to go to war? So I think they would probably be, you know, on the side of saying, hey, don't do anything because they don't want to have to get involved. But I think that they're there and monitoring it really close. I also heard uh, a guy, I think it was on Monday night, he was in the military. He was on radio with David Webb, and he said that he has some um, uh, associates that are in the military in Turkey. And he said today they received word that they were not to be further than 30 minutes away from the base. And he said when that happens, they know that, that an attack is imminent and there is going to be some military action. So the military in that area have been put on notice that, hey, we're going to do something. And, you know, all of the ships were, were told to go in, in closer. So if he is going to back out of it, it's going to have cost us a ton of money getting our military all up and ready to go. But I really think that they are, they're intending to do something, and, and it may have to do with, you know, shutting off our um, spigots from the Middle East as far as energy goes. Rita, this is, I think, very careless. It's very uh, fatalistic on behalf of this administration to put America right now where we are $17 trillion in debt and our economy is shaky to say the least and uh, people are just barely hanging on by the skin of their teeth to put us in economic hardship like this would do. And by the way, uh, of all the countries that might be uh, interceding in this event, which I think some of our our allies are having second thoughts too like Britain this morning said wait a minute Obama stop and think about this I think our country the United States of America would bear more of a negative response economically and uh, to the rest of the world standards than any other country involved oh absolutely we're always the one who takes the brunt end of it and it costs us more than all of the other countries usually combined together because we step up to the plate and do stuff the others it's kind of like okay, we'll be behind you, and they put in a few little token things, and it doesn't really cost them anything in treasure or life. Our country's always been the one that had, was the biggest loser, and then we go back and rebuild afterwards. Yeah. Um, I guess time will tell, but uh, my thoughts and my prayers are that somehow, somehow, common sense, decency, and American spirit will prevail, and Obama, for the first time in his administration, will let his ego go and do what the right thing is, and I'm, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll do the right thing. I, I'm afraid they're going to get us involved in something that's going to be extremely costly to us and, and most of all, costly to our freedom and sovereignty. We have a caller with a question. Good morning. You're on the air. Talk to me, caller. Quickly, go. Uh, they're not there. Never mind. Hang up the call. If uh, they couldn't hear the phone call, they're on. You've got to talk fast because we don't have a lot of time. Rita, I want to visit with you about the Martin Luther King Jr. March yesterday. I don't know how much of that you saw. I don't know if you heard my program yesterday. I had two very, very interesting uh, black gentlemen on my program. I had Vince Coakley from North Carolina, and I had my weatherman, Mr. Michael Rogers, on my program discussing what's going on with the divisiveness in this country and later on that day yesterday there was a gentleman and I use the term loosely because I find him to be repulsive his name is Mark Morrill and he stood up in front of the masses at that march and did nothing but preach bigotry hatred and racism against the whites that's not what that march was designed for well, that's what really makes you irritated about that whole deal is Martin Luther King and the people who um, marched with him, they had a special set of rules and regulations, and they, were, they had to promise that they would not be provocative and fight back and some of those things. I mean, they had to be living a pretty good life and, and promise that they wouldn't cause a lot of things that could, could escalate into problems. And so... They, they march, they do their thing, and, you know, and they make a difference, and they, they, they did make a difference, a big difference. And yet um, you've got ra uh, race baiters out there, and, and he was one of them, as well as Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, who have made a living off of uh, unrest and problems. 
and it makes you just think, you know what, you dirty bugger, you were just wishing for for uh, there to be protests and all kinds of things like that, so you can say how picked on the black people are and that type of thing. And and uh, I, I don't think that he wants them to have equality. He wants them to be um, above equality and everybody else in, you know, unequal equality. Well, there was nothing in his particular speech that was positive or anything for hope and a better tomorrow. It was all negativity. It was all about what he had done to us over the years, and now it's our turn to get even. That was not the concept of Martin Luther King Jr. That was not the concept of the march in Washington 50 years ago. That was not the concept of what's going to bring this country together as this administration, and I don't care who's offended by this, this administration has done more to be divisive than any administration previously as far as I'm concerned. Oh, absolutely, and the reason is is that they know that if they don't have the black people's vote, of which they do have, and and a big, por you know, big portion of the dependent people in their court they're in trouble and so it's like well we'll do everything that we can to stir it up and make it look like that you guys are the victim and we're the only ones who are your advocates and we'll take care of you you just you you leave it to us and so they keep stirring the pot and stirring up trouble instead of saying hey you know that things are looking good and and how can how can anybody say that that there hasn't been enough stuff i mean we can always do better of course but my heavens, there's tons more black representatives across this nation, and and then the one senator who was black, they wouldn't even invite to come and speak. You can tell that it's all one-sided. Well, on that note, I want to inject something and have you discuss a little bit. There was a major contention yesterday by conservatives and the Republican Party, and rightfully so that none of them had been invited to speak at the dais and give any comments on Martin Luther King Jr. Day whatsoever regarding the march. And it was absolutely all a Democrat and very leftist wing speaking podium, and it was repulsive. They did not want him to get up there and say, you know what, the way that we get our equality now is that we march and we do what is right and we work hard for it they didn't want that it's like we've got to be victims and so they didn't want to let tim scott uh come on because he's a conservative yeah. i mean they just totally think he's irrelevant Another subject that I want to get into in just a minute, and it just ate on me the first hour, uh, talking about Muslim killer and Nadal Hassan. I want to get with you on that in just a minute, but right now we've got an update on the weather brought to you this hour by Reg Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls with my buddy Ryan Horsley. Don't forget Reg Trading Post has all your hunting needs, everything you need in historic Old Town Twin Falls, and they're also looking for used firearms. They'll give you a really good deal on your guns on trade in check it out at red's trading post right now here's michael rogers with a weather update hey everybody michael rogers from michael rogers weather.com it's one of those days where you thought it was going to cool off and we were done with summer wrong we're going to see hot temperatures low 90s for today a lot of sun very little clouds and this is going to stay with us all the way through sunday so have a nice day. Enjoy the weather. It is the only weather you've got. Thank you, Michael. Red's Trading Post, of course, on this weekend, the 30th and 31st, the Smith & Wesson truck's going to be at Red's Trading Post. You can get some great deals on Smith & Wesson. 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls, Red's Trading Post. Rita, the verdict came down, and the jury decision of the death penalty for Muslim killer Nadal Hassan and really, I say this with a, uh, a real disdain, this is no different than really kind of giving the guy life in prison. And the reason I say that is, even though he was self-appointed as his own attorney and admitted that he committed these heinous crimes and killings, he still is subjected to being given appeals for his court case. And he could probably drag this thing along for another 5, 10, 15, 20 years and before the public is given the right to witness and acknowledge his execution. I think this is appalling. 
Well, it is, and that's what makes you so mad about the, the legal system in our country is he has the opportunity to do it. But you know what? If he says, I don't want to, why should they do it? It just costs us tons and tons of money. The only ones that benefit from it are the uh, lawyers. And I think they need to, even though giving him what he wants, which is the death sentence, and he'd probably love to be even shot by, you know, a, a firing squad, but I think that that's what we need to do because it would save us some money in the end and put it to rest. It would be all done and over with because this is just going to drag on for several more years, cost us a ton of money, and it has just got to be horrible for the families and the victims and, and that who were involved in, in the happenings of that day. Well, and there's something else, too, that I'm bitterly opposed to is the way the Obama administration, in a very cowardly fashion, has called this workplace violence when, in essence, it was was a pre-planned, pre-ordained terrorism activity, as uh, Nadal Hassan has acknowledged, and the government needs a slap in the face for the way they've treated the victims and the families of this terrible ordeal. Absolutely. It's, it's just beyond reason that they would even do that. I can't, I can't imagine in my wildest dreams why they wouldn't want to get it wrapped up and get the victims to healing and, and have it over and done with. and and make settlements to those people to take care of their medical needs and, and stuff, the ones who were injured in that. I mean, good grief. It's just dragging on in those people. Their lives have been uprooted, and, and many of them, you know, the ones who lost family members especially, it's just heart-wrenching that they can't get this over and done with and start the healing process. Absolutely. Uh, another story that I found very interesting this morning as I turned on my news reports and talked to some of the people back in uh, New York and Washington, D.C. at about 4 o'clock this morning, um, I was really surprised that there is now some new studies that have come forth to show that the Democrats and the Obama administration have been basically covering up the facts about voter ID laws. Studies have shown and proven that the Democrats and the liberal left statements of, oh, if you have a voter ID law, it's going to suppress the vote. That's a lie. It's a lie. And as a matter of fact, in many states, it has been proven through these studies that the black vote was higher when they had voter ID laws. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think that's probably true. I think it probably was higher. But the other thing is, is you can't tell me that when, when counties and cities offer to give people IDs at no charge, a lot of them say, you know, if you can't get in here, we'll arrange for someone to come and pick you up and get you that ID so that you can vote. Well, if they can't get someplace, who takes them to vote? Yeah. So they, they have to have accessibility. It is not a stopping point. It does not keep them from, from voting. I had to show my ID when I voted the other day in the school thing, and I'm, I'm frankly glad that they do it because there's a little bit of policing there. Yeah, but now how many times, and you travel, how many times, whether it's uh, opening up a bank account or whether it's getting on an airplane or whatever the case might be, how many times is that ID a necessity? Oh, all the time, and even to use your credit and debit That's card, right. usually you have to show an That's ID. That's right. And, and you know when Obama himself made the comment, and I, I'm taking this and paraphrasing it, I don't have the exact verbiage right here, but I remember it well, and you do too, Obama made the statement that it's easier to get an assault rifle than it is to get an ID to vote. What a blasphemous lie. Well, and they only say that because they're trying to inject the... Uh you know the deal about the guns, and we've got it. We've got to take control of those guns, and da, 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 on and on and on. So it's just putting more in to stir things up. Absolutely, we have a quick call. I'm down to two minutes left. Good morning, caller. Go ahead. Yeah, Zip, could you ask your guest that uh, Obama has to clear off on the death penalty for uh, for uh, military people? Uh, Rita, what do you know? What do you know about? Thank you, caller, for your call. Appreciate that very much. What about uh, for the military? In this case, Nadal Hassan, uh, Barack Hussein Obama as president. What's uh, the requirements for his signing off or signature on that death notice? I do not know for sure, so I'd be really surprised if he actually had to sign off on it. However, he is the commander in chief, so there's a good possibility of that. 
I would tend to think that when they go by the military laws and, and follow their handbook of, of procedures and they follow pretty closely, that um, I would be surprised if they have to have the president's signature. Actually, However, I do not know. They, they do. Actually, I, I did look into that, and the president does have to sign Well, I, I wasn't sure, but I was going to say, yes, he does, due yeah, to the fact does. that he is the commander-in-chief. But I didn't have the exact verbiage right in front of me, but you've solidified it. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate that. And, and this scares me. This scares me because I see more tactical ways to let this man not be punished for what he has done. Well, you know, we haven't had hardly any of the terrorists in the last five years um, no. killed or anything. Absolutely. So maybe he is the, the doorstop. I want to go back in the time remaining. I've got a minute left here, Rita. Uh, I actually think, as I stated earlier this morning, that right now we are at a very crucial point in America's history. And I think more crucial than ever before because of the volatility of what can happen in the world today with nuclear weapons and everything else. I think Obama has got to sit down over this Labor Day weekend, rethink, restructure, and possibly recompose what he's going to do as a basic world leader because this mess in the Middle East could be the Armageddon that we all fear. Oh, and I think he wants it. Personally, I think he wants it. Armageddon, just like the Middle Eastern people do. It's time to have the caliphate and, and let's go. Let's bring it on. I mean, they're anxiously awaking and I are, are waiting and I'm not so sure that, uh, that our president isn't on board with them. Rita Ramsey, I always appreciate your comments. You are a dear friend and a very special guest. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, and have a good Labor Day. You too. Bye. Thank you very much. I am afraid. I am afraid. I just don't think that they have looked at the consequences. I don't think that they really are thinking about America. Well, it's hunger time. Uh, I cheated just a little bit last night and had a relatively large supper for me. And just moments ago, I cheated again and had a very, and by the way, I hope Gina's listening, a very delicious, fresh zucchini muffin. But I am hungry, and I am starving to death, and I know some great places to go, including burgers, etc. Oh my goodness, 700 North Overland in Burley and 124 South Oneida in Rupert. Two great locations, and they've had that August special after uh, Fridays where you can go in uh, after 3 p.m. in the day and have a mushroom burger for only $3.99. Add a soda and fries for just a little extra cost. You're going to love it. The food is fantabulous at Burgers, etc., two locations in Burley and Rupert. Let's not forget our friends over at Taco Bandito. Hello, friends at Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley, with the taco salad, burrito with the crushed chips, and say that fast five times, meat, dressing, lettuce, and cheese, and they've got a grilled chicken bacon ranch quesadilla. Ooh. That's good. And they've got nachos and chimichangas. Everything is really delicious at Taco Bandito 2301 Overland in Burley. Head on over to Hayburn. Hello, Steve-O's. How are you? You better believe it. 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And they've got fresh-cut Idaho French fries, hand-padded hamburger patties made daily with love. And they've got all the uh, menu. they got steaks and chicken and seafood and salads and everything. And wow, you're just going to love the atmosphere. You're going to love the friendly service. It's really good food at Steve-O's in Hayburn. Hayburn. And last but not least, in our continuing saga of great places to go have lunch, the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main and Burley. Mm-hmm. I'm drooling all over. They've got the famous Farmer Brown Burgers. Love the famous Farmer Brown Burgers. And they've got all their French fries with the special sauce and the tater tots and the finger steaks and the cheese sticks and... Oh, any kind of shake you could ever want. Well, you just stop in and say, Howdy, at 601 East Main and Burley, the AC Drive-In. And those are just a couple of places to go when you're hungry and starving to death. Are you?
Gina? Duh. Duh. <laughs> Duh, she says. I'm always hungry. You like Deanne, I mean, but you never really put any weight on. Well, just because we're running around. Yeah, Deanne's always running, helping me and everything, and so are you. And what do we find out about John McEwen? You know, I'm still waiting to hear back, and I, I, wow, um, I don't know. Nitty gritty dirt band, man. John's got to be my age. He's he must be an old fogey like I am. You know, I'm not even going to comment. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking at a at a picture, and yeah, probably so. Yeah, I'll bet he's in his mid sixties. Yeah. Or more. Or more. Because so. I believe they had their first, now they're, I'm going to put some age on myself quickly. Okay. I think they had their first hit record back in the latter 60s, if I remember. You think so? 68? Uh, I'm going to have to actually Google that. Okay. Well, do they have a Google that goes back that far? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, probably so. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, You're going to scare uh, me right now. Yeah, uh, uh, 1966 is 66. When, they, uh, when the band formed. I was in college, and they had their first big hit, I think, is 67 or 68. I'm going to say 68. You're probably right. Uh, it just says 1966 without taking up too much time. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, it'd be nice to have John on. It'd be really a treat. And uh, the big concert's coming up on September 21st, isn't it? Actually, you know, they're doing a slew of concerts. Of course, they're going to be doing uh, a little impromptu concert at, at the Square for yeah. George Mass and the Rupert yeah. POWMIA. Then they're going to be doing a little bit, uh, a little concert up above Doc's Pizza, and they're going to have a concert over at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds. They're going to be singing up a storm here for they pizza. They are. They are. And so uh, we're going to try and get them on the air, and then I'll get all of the particulars and where people can get their tickets and all that kind of good stuff. All right. Well, listen, i tell you what. I'm going to take a break for six minutes, and we'll be back. We'll be back. Don't go away. Thought I'd let the music play a little bit. Besides that, it scares Gina. She thinks that maybe I left. <laughs> Welcome back. Hour number three is up at the ranch with our major sponsor, of course, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do at all seven locations, along with our great advertisers, including Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Call 734-6969. And our friend, Mr. Brent Lee at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and More. Good morning, dear friend. Well, Zeb, you get Jeff today. That's okay. just what I said in the introduction. Here's our dear friend Jeff at Lee's Furniture, Floors, <laughs> and more. Well, we appreciate you having us on your show. I'd just like to uh, extend an invitation to everybody out there, all of your uh, listening audience. Uh, let them know that we have some great specials. And in preparation for Labor Day coming up, we have a three-day celebration, which uh, consists of Friday, Saturday, and Monday. We are open Monday for those uh, people who need to come and get any of their last-minute uh, shopping done before school starts. Uh, we have a number of specials, Zeb, that uh, may be of interest, especially if they're looking for some of the kids. Uh, we've got uh, uh, twin-size mattresses on sale for $149. These mm -hmm. are inner spring mattresses. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, five drawer chests for uh, $178. Now these, so if you've got kids, uh, maybe some of the kids are sharing rooms, uh, you need to consolidate some space, get all the new school clothes put away. Uh, this is a great opportunity. And, uh, of course, a number of other uh, youth bedroom furniture ideas like bunk beds and so forth. Absolutely. And also you've got, what, TV cabinets? you got it all, don't you? Well, yeah, but we don't want the kids buying those for their rooms just yet. But uh, Mom and Dad can come in and grab one. Okay. And then also, what about the queen bedroom sets? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, actually, Zeb, uh, we've got a number of specials, not only the, the, the youth bedroom furniture, but for the adults, if you want to come in and buy a complete bedroom set, yeah. uh, a number of those specials where you can get like the headboard, uh, dresser, and mirror starting around $599. Uh, one of our best specials, and I mentioned this before, and we only have a few left, but we have a premium pocketed coil plush top mattress box set, regularly $1,199. Five ninety nine for both pieces. Wow. Fantastic value. Okay. And Deb, also, just not to just focus on that, uh, we have a new shipment of dining room furniture that just arrived, a new shipment of recliners and motion furniture. You know, football season's coming up, and if, if anybody else out there is like me, I love football. It's nice to be able to have a 
place where you can sit, put your feet up, watch the ball game. You know, Boise State's going to be starting up soon. BYU, all the all the great teams. And then also uh, for Lab- Labor Day Zeb, uh, we have a great special on all of our floor covering. And I just want to quickly highlight, we've got the largest selection of flooring in the Minicaja area here in stock. You can come take a look at it. We've got vinyl, carpet, tile, hardwood, uh, you name it, we have it here. Holy smokes. You know, I got to tell you, one little word sums you up. You did a smooth job. <laughs> that was yeah, great. You're learning from the best. No, man, that was great. Now, this big, big Labor Day sale is going to be Friday, Saturday, and next Monday, and it's 15 months, same as cash, right? That is correct, and I appreciate you mentioning that. Our hours on Friday are from 9 until 6. Saturday, we're here from 10 until 5. And on Monday, we'll be here from 10 until 4. So we'd just like to invite everybody to come in. Uh, come in and get the you know first selection here. But uh, anyway, just a fantastic opportunity to take advantage of those savings. Jeff, you did a great job. Have a great Labor Day weekend at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Thanks. Overland in Burley. Thank you, Zeb. We God bless. You. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh, nice, nice guy right there. Jeff at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Hey, don't forget the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main and Burley. They've got delicious lunch and specials every day, Monday through Friday, for just five ninety five. You know, i got a fly that will not leave my microphone alone. Every time I get ready to talk, he lands on the mic and just looks at me. Get out of here. And don't forget, too, at the Chadwick, they got a senior citizen dinner special, Monday through Thursdays from 4 to 6 p.m. for only five ninety five. And today the special is, oh, I remember mom used to make this when I was a little kid, chicken noodles over mashed potatoes and soup and salad. I love that. Chicken noodles, that's so good. At the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main and Burley, you stop in and see some really, really nice people today. Well, we're going to just mosey on down the road right now. We're going to stop at Twin Falls, and we're going to have our interesting segment about making sense with your money with our dear friends, Idaho Lending Group, at 1182 Eastland Drive North in Twin Falls. Telephone number to call, 734-5626. NMLS number 181777, Equal Opportunity Lender. And now, without further ado, good morning to Scott Martin. How are you? Uh, I'm on hold waiting for him. Yeah, oh, sure. Hold on. Here he is. Hold on. And we'll try that again. We just gave him an outstanding introduction, and without further ado, the second time, here is Scott Martin. Good morning. Good morning, Zeb. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How's everything? Any technical difficulties? No, we, uh, we didn't have any technical difficulties. We were just waiting for you to get on the phone, and I was a little early with my uh, introduction. Um, oh, that's right. What's going on at Idaho Lending Group? I know every day you're helping and serving people and trying to, as borrowers, help save them money and understand their loan options. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to talk about this morning. I thought today we'd talk about, we've had a lot of questions about where the market's going to be, uh, what's happened to get us where we're at currently, and just some stuff that's that's maybe going to impact, I'm going to talk a little bit about the flood insurance changes that are coming up, that I know uh, that in your area you do have people that are in a flood zone, and after the changes it might affect more people in that area. So Mm. we'll go over some of that and some of the the uh, changes coming up in the next probably six months in the mortgage industry. What actually is the determining factor, Scott, as to the changes that are going on now and influencing the mortgage market? What's happening? Okay. So so recently what has happened is, and you, and I know that you, you know about the quantitative easing, and you know about that currently the Fed is purchasing about $85 billion per month in mortgage-backed securities. That has been artificially keeping their interest rates down. So as we, as we recently, as they talked about the possibility of the economy getting a little bit better, uh, they've come out and announced that at some time, mid-2014, they plan on winding down their strategy of purchasing mortgage-backed securities. So just the, just the discussion that there is going to be a time frame on reducing that has caused the interest rates over the last eight weeks to go up by uh, about a full point mm. from where they were. So um, we've seen a huge increase in interest rates. And, and when we talk about all of this, we t- it really comes down to how is that going to change people's you know, payments or buying power. Um, that's a big factor. 
as the Fed does move towards that, I think you'll see uh, the rates continue to increase. It's mm-hmm. just the reality. Um, purchase, when they purchase those mortgage-backed securities, it artificially keeps the market, the interest rates low. Now, so what- if they start to wind that down, we're going to start. We're going to continue to see interest rates rise. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that uh, is going to be a huge impact next year is. It is, uh, I, know, I know you're a legislative guy, so it's Bill H.R. 4348. It's the Bigger Waters Reform Act, and it has to do with flood insurance. Flood insurance, the, the reserve for the flood insurance, they're saying because of the recent you know, Hurricane Sandy, and the issues that they've had recently, that the reserve for flood insurance is not adequate. So in this bill, they've requested a rezoning of the flood maps. So across the country, they're going to rezone the flood areas to, to include more potential flood zones. So what you'll see is people that are not currently in a flood zone, but maybe close to a flood zone, those people may be included in a flood zone. So that'll be a tremendous increase. Uh, flood insurance, kind of an average, is around $600 a year. Um, I know that there's quite a few people in, in Burley because of the river uh, that, that are in the flood zone. The other impact is they've, they've uh, in the bill, it talks about a 20% increase in premiums. Mm-hmm. So that is currently uh, Bill H.R. 4348, the Bigger Water Reform Act. And the reality is that's probably going to pass. They will rezone the flood zones. It'll take in more people, and they're going to increase the, the amount that they're going to uh, that they're going to take. Scott, let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, in your area, I think that that'll be a, a huge impact. Yeah, I, I do too. Let me ask you this question. Uh, here they are. They're just changing uh, some of the adaptability of some of the rules. And personally, straight off the cuff, is this just a way to garner more money? Uh, we're not, uh, there's people probably that are not even close to a drop of water, but to incorporate them in these increases of $50 a month, $600 a year, is it just a way to garner more funds? And basically, the consumer has nothing to say about it yes I mean absolutely they in their write-up it it absolutely states that it says that our coffers are below the reserve requirements we need to rebuild those so what they've done is they're going to rezone the map so that means we're going to we're going to go out and encompass more people and require them to have flood insurance I mean that they're stating that and in addition to that they're going to increase the premiums by 20 percent mm. so the answer is absolutely it's just a way to to get more people to pay into the fund what do you tell people when you're working with them let's say senior citizens on very very strict fixed incomes especially with the cutbacks that are happening now on social security and medicare and everything else what do you tell these people when they're looking at and fifty dollars a month is a rather exorbitant fund for them or anyone right now with fixed incomes how do they get around this well there's really no way to get around it um, and it's just unfortunate. If you look at the, what, what, you know, with them refunding this, the Waters Act, the, uh, I look at it just like they did when the unemployment uh, was set to expire. And when they extended it, you know, Fannie and Freddie are, are uh, GSA, government-sponsored entities, and um, they were intended to be a private-public partnership. Well, they're, they're bankrupt, and they're currently in receivership by the, the government. And during that, the extension of the unemployment benefits, they tacked on a .125 fee to every Fannie Mae mortgage that is done, or Freddie Mac mortgage, called a G fee, to go towards helping support the cost of unemployment mm. extension. So in everybody that does a loan, that's the amount that's just built into the pricing, that they now have found a way to help fund the government. And when they look at this stuff, I think that they look at the mortgage industry and they look at all of the sales and they look at these are ways that they can, kind of under the radar, go in and take additional funds. And once it's built into that, I don't see them ever pulling that back out. They're Mm -hmm. never going to just say okay we've got enough we'll stop charging every mortgage that's not the way it's going to work they've found an additional revenue stream and they're going to continue 
Now, I would suggest that everybody within the sound of our voices get a hold of you and find out exactly what's going on at Idaho Lending Group, 1182 Eastland Drive North in Twin Falls, 7345626. Scott, any final thoughts this morning? No, I'd say uh, if you've got people that are thinking about uh, looking at still refinancing or purchasing, I think whoever you're going to go with, we'd love for you to give us a shot, of course, but whoever you're going to go with, get it, get in there and get the numbers and try to get locked in as quickly as possible and protect the savings that you'll have on possibly refinancing or purchasing. When they talk about purchase power, that's getting it done while things are still low. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of people talking about arms. Everybody's talking about adjustable rate mortgages. I say do not do an arm. An arm is a teaser rate. It'll last for five years, and none of us know where the market is going to be in six years. So stick with a conventional 30-year fixed or 15-year fixed mortgage because then you know exactly where you're going to be in six years. I'll tell you what, this is a straight shooter, ladies and gentlemen. I've known him for a long time. He's as uh, honest a man as you ever could hope to work with, Scott Martin and the rest of his staff at Idaho Lending Group, 1182 Eastland Drive North in Twin Falls. Number again, 734-5626. Making sense with your money and helping you. Scott, God bless you for your thoughts this morning, and I want to pursue this a little bit further about this flood insurance and maybe we can talk more about it again next week okay okay that sounds great thank Thanks. you That's scott appreciate it thank you boy i'll tell you what uh, and scott's such a straight up guy and i suggest wholeheartedly they help me save a lot of money and they can help you too at idaho lending group 734-5626 we are going to visit with the lovely miss vicky in just a few minutes at vicky's country gardens but i want to remind you too about twin falls county fair and rodeo oh my it's in full swing right now and coming up sunday don't forget live and in concert, Craig Morgan. Man, this guy has had a whole bunch of hits, including Redneck Yacht Club. That's one of my favorites, the Redneck Yacht Club, and Almost Home, and that's what I love about Sunday. That's another good one I really like. Craig Morgan in concert. Get your tickets right now. Tickets are on sale, and call the fair office at the Twin Falls County Fair and Magic Valley Stampede. Tonight's the first night of the Magic Valley Stampede. Last night, they had the big monster truck tour, and they've got, uh, like I said, the concert, and they've got all kinds of daily activities, all the showing and the judging, and Jeff Martin, the magician, and Michael Swenson, comedy hypnotist, all of this and much more at your Twin Falls County Fair and Magic Valley Stampede going all the way till September 2nd. Right now, let's get on the phone and talk to the lovely Miss Vicky at Vicky's Country Gardens. Hello, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. Good morning, Vicky. Good morning, Zeb. How are you? I had my first ear of corn raised in my garden last night. Well, there you go. And it was really good, wasn't it? It was not just good. It was absolutely delectable. There you go. I have a question, can't though. can't beat homegrown veggies. That's all there is to it. Oh, that, that's my. That's the ultimate. Now, my dumb question is, I'll start with one of my dumb questions first. Now that the corn is coming on, and maybe we've left it go maybe a couple of days too long, we better gobble it up in a hurry, huh, with all this heat? Yeah, it's going to ripen pretty fast, and, and I, I was afraid this was going to happen with our corn this year when we had this long heat spell. The early corn and the late corn are all going to kind of come together. Mm -hmm. I, the, the staggering of the days and stuff didn't work as well as if we have a normal year. Um, because heat brings corn on really fast. So, yeah, it's going to ripen, so get it picked. And most of the time, it'll keep in a refrigerator quite a while. I mean, if you've got a, you know, a cooler, a refrigerator, or that type of thing, it'll it'll keep pretty good for you. But you don't want to let it go too long on the on the stock because oh. it will get old and okay. well, then then it's not good. Then it's I'd as good as it is when it's young. I better get to picking tonight, Miss Vicky. Well, and you don't, I mean, you know, you just... You don't want the birds and everybody else to find out you've got good corn, too, because they will reach in there. And if you've got raccoons in your area, they love it, and they uh -huh. will strip that corn out of there like you ain't never seen. Okay, well, now i get another question. This lady writes this question. If the pumpkins are turning orange and you see no more new growth, can they stop watering the doggone pumpkins? 
No. No. You've got to keep some water going because you've got to understand that plant has to have that moisture to fill that pumpkin out. If you want the pumpkins to keep growing, they have that because they're... It takes the water. It's like with the cucumbers and that. That's what builds the inside. They've got to have the water to to keep going. Otherwise, your vines are going to die and your pumpkins will stay right where they're at. Okay. Another question. You've got to keep the water going on pumpkins and squash and that. Okay. I've got more pumpkins this year than I've ever had before, and it looks like Vietnam out there. I've never seen such a jungle. That's good. <laughs> My tomatoes are hidden in there someplace. You, 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 you've developed over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally my garden looked like a wasteland. <laughs> oh, hey. That's a good thing to have that. But yeah, keep the, like I say, the only thing you want to back the water off of right now is your tomatoes. Oh, okay. Back the water off of the tomatoes right now because of the fact that that'll set them, that'll start them ripening. Well, so if you've got a good, if you've got a good set of tomatoes on you, you've got some good size, and they're sitting there green and they're not ripening now, pull the water back on them, scare them a little bit, make them think that it's fall and that you know that it's time to start to ripen. Okay. Now another and, question came in from another lady and said, "Quote: When is the right time of year to trim flowering bushes? Like, and I can't read this. Is it sparia or something like that? And uh, yeah. do you know what she means? I don't understand this. I do. There's uh, some of the flowering bushes. Persitia, for one, is the one that you do not prune in the fall. You prune that. That's the yellow bush in the spring. That's very, very pretty. That comes out fully all yellow in the early, early spring. You wait for it to quit blooming in the spring and trim it after it blooms. Spirea and that is not a problem. It blooms on new growth. So consequently, you can prune on spirea pretty much any time and not have a problem with it because it does. It it blooms on new growth. It's your bushes that bloom on the old growth, like the persicia. I believe there's um, some of your lilacs you've got to be careful on, uh, those kind of things. It, that's, otherwise, you're cutting off all the bloom for next year. Okay. But spirea, you can whack on that pretty much any time you want to. So you knew what I was talking about being 40 miles away. Well, of course. Well, you are the expert. Okay, last question. This lady writes in and says, fall is almost here. What do I need to do before the snow falls with flowers and the lawn and everything else? Well, for starters, on your lawn and that, you, as fall approaches, uh, as the nights get colder, you know, we get the cooler and the days get cooler, you can start backing your water off of your lawns. You don't need them, you, you know, you don't need to keep the water as heavy on them. Um, flowers and things are going to start going dormant, start deadheading back, start trimming back, getting them ready to go into the winter. If you've got roses and things like that, you want to let those completely defoliate. And I mean, every leaf off, you want it to freeze hard enough to where there's no sign of life above the ground on them. Then mulch them really good, about six or eight inches over the crown, to protect them through the winter. Oh. And if you've got uh, some perennials that are what we call tender perennials, that then you want to let those die down, cut them off, and then throw them and and put some mulch over those also. Okay. Compost, soil aids, you know, grass clippings, what different things like that. Just something so that they have got a little bit of a protection against in case we have. They're talking a major cold winter. So I know that, just yeah. Just protected on it. Okay. Now, tell us quickly, I'm almost out of time, uh, Fertile Loam products over at Vicky's Country Garden. We do have. We have all of the Fertile Loam products um, to, do, to take care of your gardens and for bugs. And we've got the fertilizers, the insecticides, the fungicides, the whole bit. Another thing we've got is tomorrow... We are going to be getting a shipment of color of the new the fall mums are coming in tomorrow, and we've got some fall pansies coming tomorrow, and also some of the a few other perennials, fall perennials. So okay. If you want that, that fall color with the mums and the pansies and that kind of thing? We'll have a new shipment coming in tomorrow morning. All so right. Come on in and see us. Absolutely a wonderful lady. Known her for a long time. Vicky's Country Garden at 185 South, 600 West of Paul, 4385663. The lovely Miss Vicky answering all the gardening questions. Thank you and have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. You too, and I hope everybody stays safe and enjoys the weekend. All right. God bless you, Vicky. Thank you so much. Take care.
Okay, thank you. All right. I like to have a program with her. She's so informative. I really enjoy her on my program. Oh, my. Let's see what else have we got cooking here. I had something else I was going to put on the air here quickly, but I think what I'll do, uh, due to the fact that we're only moments away from the bottom of the hour and a hard break, I think I'll turn it back over to the lovely Gina Jameson, and we'll be back in about three minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Welcome back. And uh, as you know, the other day Gina and I were talking about a subject that uh, she has a young son that's six years of age in school. And uh, I've been very, very adamant that I do not like, I do not trust, and nor do I want to adhere to Mama Obama's school luncheon specials and what she thinks about obesity and everybody being able to fall into the same category. And I got to thinking about this yesterday, and uh, I looked up some of the notes that I had taken from some of the resources of information, the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the USA Today, and I got to thinking about this, and I thought I would ask you as adults if you would eat this during the course of the day and be able to function properly at your job. Now, let's just assume, Gina, jump in here. I want to talk to you about this. What time of the day do you get up? I get up at about 5.30, hit snooze a couple times, and I actually get up at about 6. All right, well, I'm up at quarter to four in the morning, okay? Okay. Right. And I get up, and uh, the first thing Deanna and I do is uh, we get the chores done and everything taken care of, and then we have a light breakfast. And by light, I mean, you know, a, bo- a bowl of bran flakes or <laughs> corn flakes or whatever, and maybe a half a grapefruit. That's it. Okay, okay and okay. a cup of coffee. Right. Now, let's assume that most adults get up at, let's say, 5.30 in the morning to get up and go to work, and they have maybe a bowl of oatmeal, a slice of toast, and maybe maybe a juice or coffee, and then off you go to work. Now, as adults, you get a break, and you're probably going to have, admit it now, maybe a mid-morning snack. Maybe you might have a cinnamon roll. You might have a muffin. You might have something at mid-morning, okay? Okay. But then if you don't, you don't have anything at mid-morning, you are going to be looking for lunch, and you're going to be a little hungry to sustain yourself, get your metabolism back up so that you can work hard for the rest of the afternoon. Our children are growing. Our children need more food. They need more energy for growing bodies and growing minds. Now, if your child gets up and has a bowl of oatmeal and a slice of toast before they get on the school bus, they're not going to get a snack in the morning. They're not going to get that cinnamon roll. They're not going to get that muffin. No. And they're going to have to wait till noon and hit the cafeteria, and this is what they're going to sit down to. They're going to sit down to a one slice, one slice of whole wheat cheese pizza, a couple of baked sweet potato fries, a small, small cup of grape tomatoes with low-fat ranch dip, and a very small cup of about a third of the way filled with applesauce, and wash it down with 1% milk. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where I really get upset. Because I did some checking on this that our kids are getting to try to sustain themselves. They're growing. They're trying to be uh, the nurture of their bodies. Yeah. That right there, what I mentioned, is absolutely phenomenal for somebody that wants to lose a lot of weight rather than go to Weight Watchers or get on Nutrisystems. Well, and have they even taken into consideration that a lot of these kids are not overweight, especially when they're growing? You're talking, of course, I'm specifically in the mindset of elementary school students, kindergarten through fifth grade. Their minds are growing. Their bodies are growing. They need that extra nutrition. So why are you scaling back on the nutrition? Why are you scaling back on the food for for a segment of the population that uh, doesn't affect these these kindergartners, now, these you, first graders? Now, what I want the parents to do today, I want everybody in the audience to do this on Thursday, August 29th. When you go to lunch today, all I want you to get 
is exactly what I mentioned a moment ago. Okay. I want you to get one slice of nothing, no pepperoni or anything on it. I want to get a, one slice of whole wheat cheese pizza. Okay. I want you to get baked sweet potato fries if you can find them, and you only get four of them. Okay. I want four? you. Yep, that's it. Four. Four. Uh, four, lady. I want you to get some grape tomatoes and dip them. Oh, goody! With low-fat ranch dip. And then I want you to look forward to and picture a small coffee cup at a restaurant, and a third of it would be filled with applesauce and wash it down with 1% milk. That's all you're going to get at noon, and you're going to work all afternoon at your labor, and then you're going to go home tonight and have a light supper. And you tell me you're not going to be skinny as a rail in 30 days. Skinny and starving to death. Absolutely. That's my point. These kids can't register any kind of growth or health on that kind of a stupid, no. frivolous diet. And I think dietitians should be outraged at Mama Obama's acting through government and the legislative sessions to try to push this kind of idiocy on our kids. Well, you know, and, and here's my deal. Uh, my son eats really, really well, and he is on the school lunch program, and I really do appreciate all of the lovely uh, ladies over there at St. Nicholas because they do feed the kids well, but they do have to follow the governmental guidelines for nutritional value of said food. Now, uh, Kennedy is kind of a picky eater, and he's not going to like and or eat everything that is put in front of him. So a whole piece of whole wheat pizza. He'll eat the toppings off of that. Yep. He will eat the applesauce, maybe. He'll drink the milk, and he'll eat those tomatoes. But that's not going to be enough to sustain him. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, no. your boy is going to be starving to death. And he's going to be hungry and cranky, and he can't focus on school. There you go. That's the whole point I'm getting at. I am so sick and tired of hearing obesity, obesity, obesity. And now here's something else. I want you to go, if you would, to any website, Gina, okay. and I want you to take a look. Now, I have here in front of me pictures from USA Today, and I have pictures from uh, the Wall Street Journal, and I have pictures from the Times News. Okay. Each and every picture that shows the students sitting there looking at this kind of a menu set before them, look at the background, look at the kids in the foreground, you will not find one, not one, and I'm looking at literally a picture here of almost uh, maybe 75, 80 kids, and I cannot see one single young person, boy or girl that is even chubby yeah honestly and uh, you know my son goes to a very small school and all of them are within their healthy weight range N nobody's obese at that school why are we trying to starve our children into being a one size fits all why are we trying to really not give them enough nourishment so that they can be attentive so that they want to learn so that they want to stay in school right. this is absolutely deplorable and I hope the parents try this I hope the parents try this what I mentioned just what the kids are going to get at a certain elementary school that one slice of whole wheat cheese only pizza yeah. four baked potato fries grape tomatoes dipped in low fat ranch dip and applesauce and milk and try that for a couple of days and you'll be as outraged as i am I, oh we totally are and you know just a, i did just a quick google of school lunch programs and this is what came up uh, some school districts quit healthier lunch program. That was by Yahoo News yep. yesterday. Yeah, I said that and yesterday. And from yep. uh, CBS News, they're also saying school districts are bailing out because kids aren't eating it. They they're don't want it. They're throwing it away. Yeah, we've got a phone call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Zeb, me and my old man was talking about this yesterday, about the uh, food that they give to schools. Have you noticed the people that make the decision of this stuff, I'm not complaining of the, you know, the weight, you know, but I'm kind of chubby myself, but they are the ones that need that food, you know, but since they can't eat the food that the kids like, they say to themselves, well, maybe we should feed them a what while we eat, because, you know, it's making us feel good. So that's why they feed the kids in school the food 
they serve them. I, uh, uh, I am just really upset about this uh, because I don't think our kids are getting enough nutrition, and I think no, our kids they're are being they're, they're being not. they're being turned mm -hmm. off of food in the schools, and they're having to literally kind of uh, blackmail others to bring them in snacks, candy bars, whatever, because they're hungry. And I don't blame yeah. kids. They're growing. They need nutrition, and they need more caloric content. Yeah, they do, but they don't see it that way. They see it, well, shoot, why should we feed them the food that we cannot eat? Well, I appreciate your phone call. I'm just very upset about this because I think our kids are absolutely not getting the nourishment they desire and need. That's why they come home and they eat the garbage food that they want to eat because the schools don't feed them the good food they're supposed to eat. I agree with you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your call. Thank you. You know, I can remember, honestly, I remember the hot lunch program at Fort Atkinson High School where I went to school in Wisconsin, and it was excellent food. And you know what? As I stated the other day, I don't believe in the obesity campaign. I'm sorry, I don't believe in it. I'm not going to buy into this where they're saying, oh, we're all going to hell in the handbasket. We're all so fat. We're just porkers. We're rolling downhill. I'm not buying into that. I think it's nothing more than governmental control. And I'm going to stand behind my statement. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Jeb. I'm a little shocked at your attitude. Well, that's you know, tough. We're just not smart enough to know how to take care of ourselves, feed ourselves, and do what we need to do to survive in this world. we got to have the government to help us with all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's why I said the statement, that's tough if somebody's upset at my attitude. Now, I know you meant that tongue-in-cheek, but I am so mad at people trying to control other people. We're all different. God made you different in DNA and body chemistry and makeup than he made me. And I think it's time for you and others to stand up and tell the government, leave us alone. I think we ought to just tie this to a constitutional right. Uh Heaven's sake, don't we have the right to pursue happiness in this country and doesn't two slices of pizza make me happy? Then I have that. How many kids, uh, when did you graduate from high school? Well, 76. All right, 76. Now, be very honest and think about this. How big was your graduating class? How many students? Uh, just under 300. Okay. Now, out of that 300, when you went through the yearbook and you looked at all the pictures and everything else, honestly now, back in 76, long before Mama Obama, how many students, honestly, in your opinion of today's standards, were obese? I would guess 10% or less, probably 30 or less. 30 or less out of 300, okay? Yeah, so we've got to feed them all to that standard then. It's that just doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense. And this is the thing I'm saying, is that you can't tell me that even with 30, and the, the government will say, oh, 30's too many, why, we can't have that. You know, put them on an exercise regimen, put them on a diet for them, but you can't fit everybody into the same round peg into a square hole. I believe we should... Uh survive on education in this country. Let's educate people about nutrition, about uh, the way they should eat, and then let them eat the way they want. Let them make their choices and decisions. And, and one other thing, what, if I may ask, and I'm not trying to be rude, but what do you do for a living? Uh, I work for government. All right. <laughs> that was good. Uh, but, yeah. now, but seriously, could you, as an adult live on what I mentioned that these kids are having for lunch in the school system and try to sit there and educate themselves in the afternoon? I think I could for about a week, and then I'd go postal and start shooting things up. All right, sir. I appreciate your call. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Very nice man right there, and I appreciate his call. My point is I am sick and tired of all of us being lumped together. And all of us are the same. And this is exactly the premise of what this government is doing. Oh, well, wait a minute. We took a look at the weight charts and why. We're obese. Why? I don't know what we're going to do. And then Mama Obama takes it as an obesity campaign. I don't believe in this. I don't. I've looked at these. I've spoken to many, many schools, elementary, junior high, high school, and colleges. I'm not seeing the numbers of obesity that they're claiming we have as a potential threat to America. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deb. You know, uh, I see a lot of kids growing up when I was in school that uh, were a little chubby, and uh, as they grew older, guess what? They grew out of it. Yes. They filled in. 
it, it went away. And it wasn't because they were obese. It was because, well, that's the way they were. And when they got older, they grew out of it. And some of the skinnier kids in school, well, guess what? When they got older, they kind of gained a few pounds here and there. It, it, everybody's different. And uh, your lifestyle, your job, your profession also... Yeah, it dictates on how your metabolism goes. If you exactly. Don't work out and you sit in an office all day pushing on a keyboard. Well, your metabolism isn't going to be that high. But for someone who's extremely active all day long, working hard, a farmer, a rancher, or whatever, you know your metabolism's going to speed up. You've got to put in a lot of extra calories into your system. Absolutely. Now, Riley, you're not a small guy. What are you about? Six foot two? Yeah, somewhere. All right. Uh, and if you don't mind my asking, what do you weigh? Oh, currently about 260. All right. My point is, I know you're active. I know you're working every day. And if you had to take on that lunch that the students are forced to eat of one slice of whole wheat cheese pizza, some baked sweet potato fries. I would starve to death. I'm you would. You right now, I know you would. would not work. I know you would. And it's not enough to keep you doing your job to the capabilities that your employer is going to pay you for. That's correct. And uh, people talk about, well, junk food. You know, when you are working your butt off and you have a little bit of time to get a lot of calories, your body needs to put forth the energy and effort to require, require me to continue out with my duties. Potato chips, a candy bar, maybe a high-calorie diet, something small with a lot of calories for a calorie intake. I'll tell you what, that makes a world of difference. Absolutely so right. It's not it's not the, the food, it's the people's ability and discipline within themselves to say, hey, look, you know, I'm putting on too, way too much weight, I'm not that active, let's cut it back, I'll get more active. Absolutely. Riley, appreciate your call. i got to run and do the weather with Michael Rogers. Thank you so much. Here now, a yes. weather update, michaelrogersweather.com. Good night, Michael Rogers from MichaelRogersWeather.com. It's one of those days where you thought it was going to cool off and we were done with summer. Wrong. We're going to see hot temperatures, low 90s for today, a lot of sun, very little clouds. And this is going to stay with us all the way through Sunday. So, have a nice day. Enjoy the weather. It is the only weather you've got. Thank you, Michael. MichaelRogersWeather.com. Gina, if you're right there, I want to ask you about uh, Kennedy for a second. Okay. All right. Now, I saw your son. Um, let's see. I think the last time I visited with him was at the, the ice, cream ice cream social. social okay. Mm -hmm. He's very fit, very, uh, for his age, I mean, you can see he's very active. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now, that little boy comes home, Mama, I'm hungry. I'm not getting yes. enough to eat. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Uh, what's the first thing that you're going to give that boy? Uh, probably a banana, some cheese, and some juice. All right. And if he's lacking energy sometime, it doesn't hurt to give them a little treat of a candy bar. Yep. It does not hurt them to have a treat of a cookie. Not it does not really hurt hungry. them to have a little dish of ice cream. I am fed up with certain aspects of food and nutrition being condemned as junk food. And that, that's a slogan that I won't use on this program. You know, I, I treat things like that as, as treats. I, okay, yeah. uh, son, how was your day today? Mom, I had a green light day. Today was awesome. Good reviews from the teacher. And I'm like, all right. Well, then you deserve a special treat. There today. you go. What would you like to have? And he'll, you know, tell me what he wants. And okay, that's what you get. You know, uh, he needs a treat or, or a snack after he gets home from school to hold him over to dinner because I know that lunch is served at between 11 and 11.30 at the school. And then he, you know, it's, he's going to be hungry when he gets home. Yeah, now when parents and adults have breakfast early in the morning like Deanna and I, just a little bowl of crunchies. And then at noon, a very, very light lunch of maybe a low-calorie type dinner and maybe a cheese stick. I'll guarantee you, lady, if I'm going out on the town that night with my lovely bride to have supper, you better hide the prime rib because this old cowboy is going to stick a fork in it. And I'm going to enjoy my eating. And you know something? You can do that and not put on any weight. I'm not going to be obese. I'm not going to be uh, carrying my tummy 
dummy in a wheelbarrow. I am so sick and tired of one size fits all. By government standards, we're not all the same. Some people are big boned. Some people are bigger in their body makeup. Some people are scrawny and skinny and have been that way all their life. But for the government to put regulations out there, oh my goodness, we're all dying of obesity. We all have to be the same. That's wrong. You know, and like uh, what is a lot of, a lot of the callers are saying is that honestly, it comes down to personal responsibility. There you go. Of of the adult, whether it's their weight or of the parent or their child's weight, it is a personal responsibility. If my son was a little on the chubby side, which he's not, uh, I might you know modify his diet as such. But he's not. He's a growing kid. He needs all of those extra little calories. And according to the nutritional standards, and because I just looked it up, uh, nutritional standards for a growing boy, his age, ages four to eight, is about 2,000 calories a day. You're not going to get that with a slice of pizza and some doggone grapes. No, and, and I was looking at the federal guidelines, and their federal guidelines for elementary school students is 650 calories, which is kind of right on par with uh, the nutritional values as set on the 2,000 calorie a day. But when you, once you get up into high school, only 750 calories per meal, and you're talking about you're feeding football players, cheerleaders, basketball, basketball players, players cross-country you know? runners. These yeah. kids are starving. Yeah, and so and and hopefully they're allowed to go through the line two or three times yeah. to get the amount of nutrition that they need. We've got another phone call. I'll take that call in just a minute. Stand by, and then I'm going to have to say adios and get the lunch bunch. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven great locations serving you, serving you with the best in tires for your vehicles. And of course, they know all the different tires, all the different tread designs for your specific style of driving. And don't forget to the best in brake value. I mean, they really really have the best in professionally trained technicians, and they can make sure that you've got safe brakes. You better believe it. Front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, it's all there with the best of people, the best of service. With Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Lane and Rupert, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. One minute to go. Quickly, caller, you're on the air. All right, two quick points. One is, why do you think they wanted to institute Obamacare? That is, they want to be able to control. Absolutely. Eat, because if you aren't eating the correct diet by their standards, they're not going to want to pay for your health care. Absolutely. Second point, I disagree with you a little bit on the fatness issue in America. We've got a fat problem. We really do. If you think back to the time when we were kids, and I'm about 10 years younger than you are, at that time, a fat kid was kind of a... You know, there were maybe out of every hundred, two or three. But you go look at the schools now, and my gosh, there's quite a few heavy kids there. So I think something needs to be done, but I don't think it's the government's business. Okay, but you and I agree on this. You and I agree on this. It still boils down to family and parental responsibility and self-responsibility. I will never adhere that it's the government's right to make us one size fits all. Amen. Thank you. God bless you for your call. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a adios today a little early because of the fact that I've got lunch punch, and I got to head the, down to Burley right away to JB's. We hope to see you there for our monthly lunch punch. I want to thank Gina, outstanding job running the board, running the program over there for us this week, and my lovely wife Deanne. God bless. We'll see you next Tuesday. Please drive carefully over Labor Day. See you next Tuesday, Zeb at the Ranch. God bless.